AFO's Foot Drop and Fall Prevention, Keys to Improving Your Mobility, Ideas That Can Help Eliminate Our Falling Crisis by Daniel Ranella. To all the people with walking and balance problems, my hope is that these words will be a light for you moving forward. We honestly believe this information can help many readers change their lives for the better. This book can help to eliminate our falling crisis if more people can become educated on the walking concepts explained in these pages. AFO Service in Illinois. We can help. Here comes one of only a few shameless plugs in the book. I am an orthotist, aka a licensed AFO expert in the Chicagoland area. You can call me toll free at 1 866 746 3552 if you want help. I can also be found online at www.ranellapo.com. That's www.rinellapo.com. We see people throughout Chicagoland and the neighboring counties. Shameless plug number one has ended. Don't worry, I won't make this an all-out advertisement. Testimonials. My primary walking issues have to do with balance, pain, and falling, and not necessarily foot drop. I started wearing AFOs after years of foot problems from osteoporosis and arthritis. I've worn good shoes and have had orthotics in my shoes. I've done therapy and went so far as getting shots in my feet. I tried anything else the foot doctors could do for me. I have fallen many times. I have broken my nose three times as a result. Moreover, I required surgery, stitches, and staples, and I remember getting banged up knees as a result of these falls as well. The last thing the foot doctor said was, I've done all I can do for you. You need to try AFOs. I was like, what's an AFO? I went home and looked on the internet, just like everyone else. I was very confused about them, but I'm usually a very positive person, so I thought, what do I have to lose? At the time, I could not walk without falling. Moreover, in the past, I could no longer work as a beautician because I couldn't stand for very long anymore. This is especially important because many people count on me as I run the business. Working around my home became almost impossible as well. Basic necessities like laundry or even going shopping were now next to impossible. These problems have no room in my life. I couldn't sleep at night either because of the pain. I remember taking strong pain medications. By the time I saw Dan, I was all geared up to try the AFOs. Dan and I talked about my life, my job, my future for both, and all I could say was I wanted to stay on my feet as long as I can. After receiving the AFOs, it was like a miracle. When I went to Dan, it was very clear from the beginning that the AFOs wouldn't cure my feet, but they could drastically help me with my pain. They would also give me the stability I needed to live my life. Almost from the first day, my life changed dramatically for the better. Less pain and improved balance meant that I would be able to continue to work and live my life on my terms and not worry about falls. I can do laundry now, work, shop, and I even climbed up a hill in Galena, Illinois, just to prove to myself I could confidently complete this task. This is how much AFOs have helped me over the years. Thanks, Dan. Judy F. from Romeoville, Illinois. More than a year ago, shingles destroyed the nervous system in my left foot, leaving me with floppy foot. I wasn't able to walk in that condition. The Ronella people fashioned a brace for that left foot and lower leg. The brace fits perfectly, enables me to walk normally, and is easy to put on and remove. I'm not aware I'm even wearing it when it's on. I don't remember what it cost, but I would gladly pay it again because it already has helped me to walk for more than a year. LP, PhD, Carroll Stream, Illinois. Before I received my foot drop brace, I fell quite a bit. Once I got my AFO, I no longer fell. I felt more support and stood with more confidence. I now have foot drop braces on both of my feet. I require a cane or walker, but I feel much safer and also have better balance with them on. I put them on when I get dressed and they stay on until I go to bed. For me, I hardly feel that they are on. On a scale 1 out of 10, I would say it's almost a 10. It's a night and day type of thing for me. I cannot stress how light and comfortable it is. I find it surprising that this little piece of plastic can do so much. It's a bit of a miracle. Bill from Bolingbroke, Illinois. I wasn't aware of what drop foot was, never having heard of it previously. I found out what it meant, however, as I tripped like a tipsy cartoon character on a sidewalk right in front of my church door. I really like my brace. It has been one and a half years since my surgery and subsequent therapy and healing. When I strap the device on, I don't worry about falling. I go anywhere in the house, having continued my birding hikes, although at a slower pace now, of course, after my surgery. I can also go into the backyard and go on paved and easy trails for hiking. 
This device is the best thing. Of course, it goes without saying that I must exercise caution. I use my walking cane as needed. This device fits into my left shoe perfectly. Of course, I had to go up a bit larger shoe size. Daniel Ronell has been most helpful 100% in fitting these. For this device, I give a major thumbs up. Easy to use, comfortable, and secure. I am grateful for the ability to walk, travel, drive, do all the things I like to do without worrying about my foot drop all day long. At times, when the walking is shorter, I don't even use the cane. What a wonderful invention. Miss Carol C., Joliet, Illinois. Due to recent tendon damage, I was unable to walk due to drop foot. Your brace enabled me to walk. I unfortunately won't be kicking any field goals, but still use the brace to walk one year later. Thank you much, Phyllis T. I would highly recommend Ronell Orthotics. I'm a police officer and on September 13th, 2018, I was shot multiple times while on duty. There was severe damage to my right tibia and fibula with several pieces of bone fragments missing. I was unable to walk for close to eight months due to the inability to bear any weight. After discussing with my orthopedic surgeon the pain, he recommended I try custom fit leg support. My insurance company recommended Ranella. I immediately contacted Ranella advising them I would be leaving the country in two days, and they quickly made a space for me that same evening. Their staff is awesome. I met with Daniel Ranella and explained my concerns. I also advised him that I needed the device before I left the country. Daniel was friendly and informative. He took a cast of my leg and said he would get to work on it that same day. The device was ready by noon the next day. Daniel taught me how to wear it and while in his office made adjustments so that I would be more comfortable and took all my feedback into account. For the first time in eight months, I've been able to comfortably put pressure on my right leg. His custom device is able to fit in my shoe and I'm able to wear pants over it. The ankle is hinged, making it extremely easy to use. For the first time in a very long time, I feel like a human again. While I was out of the country, Daniel contacted me multiple times asking me how the device felt and if there were any concerns. He provided me with the tips and other resources to make the device more comfortable. I am extremely satisfied with their service on the device. I would highly recommend to anyone that is in a similar situation, don't wait to put your body at ease. Louis D. from Romeoville, Illinois. I was diagnosed with foot drop in 2015. I lived with this walking problem for about a year. At this time, I was walking funny and falling occasionally. When I talked to my neurologist about my walking issue, he recommended I get an AFO. Someone told me about Ranella, but I decided to wait another six months. After all, I didn't want to wear a walking aid that I had to potentially wear the rest of my life. I was 58 at the time. After another couple of months of falling and not feeling stable while walking, I decided to go and see Dan to get the AFO. When I met Dan, he explained my options and how it would work. I opted for a non-hinged AFO. When I picked it up, I was very happy with stability and ease of moving around with it on. Also, the fact that it was totally concealed was great. You couldn't tell I had this walking aid on. After a couple years had passed, my right leg started showing signs of foot drop as well. So, my neurologist had me get an AFO made for my right leg. Ranella made that one also, and it works great. After using this brace on my left foot for about five years, I had Dan make a new one in January 2021. This time, I had it hinged. They did a great job, and when I picked it up, it was totally different from my old brace. Dan explained everything to me, and after getting used to it, the walking aid works great. All in all, the AFOs kept me working, walking, hiking, and riding my motorcycle and ATVs. Anyone who has issues with walking or balance should consider getting one. It is something that could improve your quality of life and get you back to a normal and active life. Daniel Ranella and his staff are great. Dale from Crete, Illinois. To all the listeners of this audiobook, I'd like to let you know that there is a PDF attached with this that you can see for the citations and the extra pictures that will help make this book more real for you. Introduction. With all of the fall prevention information online, why do you suppose that people are still experiencing falls at an alarming rate? Have you ever wondered about that? To be specific, the CDC, the Center for Disease Control and Prevention, currently states that more than one out of four older people falls each year. Perhaps even more alarming is the fact that the CDC also mentions that every second of every day an older adult age 65 plus suffers a fall in the U.S., making falls the leading cause of injury and injury death in this age group. This statistic is staggering by itself. 
However, if we take a step back, we should remind ourselves that the United States population is equivalent to 4.25% of the total world population. We can only assume that the numbers per second are much worse on a global scale. With each fall, individuals everywhere feel their independence slipping away. It is a fearful existence for many with walking problems and for good reason. Something is clearly missing in our approach to fall prevention and walking problems. The United Nations states that in 2019, there were 703 million adults aged 65 and older worldwide. If we assume that at least one quarter of these individuals are falling too, that means approximately 176 million people are falling as of 2019. Truthfully, the number of people who fall is probably higher in our estimation. This is because many people struggle with foot drop that are younger than 65 as well. Moreover, many people do not tell their doctor they fall to report the issue. Not only that, the number of older persons, individuals 65 and older, are projected to double to 1.5 billion in 2050. That means if we continue down our current train of thought, at least 352 million people by 2050 will potentially suffer from falling issues worldwide. These falling challenges can quickly interrupt people's lives and cripple their independence. Not only that, but the negative impact of these falls will extend significantly into their families' lives as well. This stress can further burden families around the globe that are already dealing with so many struggles as it is. Falls happen in the town you live in every day. Very unfortunate, yes, but true. People just like you are facing the negative effects of these incidents routinely. Sooner or later, many people you personally know, those who consistently fall, will end up paying dearly. The consequences of these falls will continue to perpetuate on a much larger scale if we do not do something different. If we want to improve upon this fall percentage rate, the public needs to be presented with new information. We need walking and fall prevention information that goes well beyond the same set of ideas we read about on most blogs, for example. You see, it seems that many of the same 5 to 10 ideas are commonly posted and frequently rehashed online on the topic of fall prevention, as we will discuss in more detail later. Thus, the reason for this book. In these pages, we will challenge and help you to transform your ideas surrounding the topic of foot drop, toe drag, and fall prevention. Obviously, only do so if you agree fully with what we are talking about. As we delve chapter by chapter, your eyes will be open to new information that can help save your life. Yes, we actually just said that. This information is not new in the medical field, but is unfortunately new to many of our readers. Wouldn't it be great to get the insider information from the medical community in a simplified way so you can transform your gait? If you have a walking problem and are frustrated with the solutions that are being presented to you, then this book is written especially for you. Or if you are relatively new to walking challenges, then this is also a good book to help you deal with the challenges that lie ahead. As you may already know, foot drop, balance problems, and falls can lead to a host of other negative side effects, meaning some individuals need to stare at the ground so they do not trip, while others need to alter their gait just so they can still walk. Do you feel the need to stare at the ground so you don't trip? Do you struggle with extra hassles that come along with your walking problem? It is our goal to help you transform your gait and help you eliminate falls. We'll be focusing on a walking solution that is typically provided by licensed medical specialists around the globe. In the medical field, this walking aid is known as an AFO, otherwise referred to as an ankle foot orthosis. It helps people walk, kind of like how a cane or walker can help people walk better, except you do not have to hold it. Moreover, it is different than a walking cane or walker in that an AFO goes directly to the source of your foot drop. This walking aid can significantly help people with their balance issues as well. Medical professionals and current AFO users typically know about our walking solution. However, millions of individuals outside of these two circles are oftentimes unaware of its benefits. We will reveal the two main reasons why we believe this is the case shortly. Moreover, if you do know something about AFOs, you're likely to learn more about their use here. Therefore, there is still value for you if you stay along for the ride. We do believe the reasons to get an AFO far outweigh the potential drawbacks. We are not going to deny that. 
We will be discussing all of that with you throughout the book. Time and experience have shown us the positive results many times over of this walking aid, and this has greatly influenced our opinion on AFOs. The transformation from people being insecure about standing or walking or struggling with the effects of foot drop to feeling confident and unburdened again is priceless. If you fall, please read this book. It can change the game for you. After you read this and have thought about it for yourself, hopefully you will agree. In the end, however, we want what is best for you. It will be a new concept for many of our readers, and you should confirm this information with other people you meet. It is my hope that you will take this information and quickly digest it. Fact check it, if desired. By all means, see what other people are saying about it in an online foot drop and fall prevention support groups. As an added bonus to this book, we would like to invite you to our free Facebook support group, AFO's Foot Drop and Fall Prevention, or you can obviously visit any other that you wish. See if you think this walking solution can work for you, as we believe it can. These concepts will remain uncomplicated. We want you to know that this book is informative, yet simplified, and we will not ruin this message for you with a bunch of complex medical jargon. One of the goals of this book is to make sure people everywhere can understand our message quickly. The information within these pages needs to be easily consumed so that our quality of life can be transformed. Having a medical degree should not be a prerequisite in order to receive important information that can help you quickly improve your life. In other words, these walking concepts and fall prevention ideas do not have to be expressed to you in a complex way with medical speak. As you may already know, complicated sounded phrases that are too medical in nature can sometimes backfire when it comes to overall reader comprehension. We need a global understanding, not a professional journal on the topic that only medical professionals can read. As you already know, there can be power in simplicity. We will do our best for you to keep it that way. Conventional ideas on fall prevention. Oftentimes, the conventional ideas that you read about with fall prevention are positive in nature. The intention behind many blog articles is good, and there is value there. We are not debating that. We must re-examine our approach to educating people on our falling crisis, however, unless we want fall rates to stay the same. If fall rates stay as they are, the future will be ruined for millions of individuals. Dare we say tens of millions or even hundreds of millions of people. The emotional, physical, and economic consequences of foot drop, balance problems, and falls will break the lives of many people and their families. Moreover, walking problems and falls can and eventually will steal your time. As you already know, we only have a certain amount of time in this life. Utilizing your time resources with slower walking or using your time to reflect on the cause and effect of your last fall is something we can help you to minimize with the education in this book. Ideally, we would like to see you spend this time doing other meaningful things for yourself. You might very well agree that we simply deserve better than the falling norms that are in place today. It also needs to be said that our method of fall prevention is not something I alone created. I am not trying to position myself as the guru who alone has the ability to help you. That would be unfair to you as the reader. The general concepts of these walking aids are taught in medical schools around the world. Moreover, AFOs are ordered by clinicians for their patients on a daily basis, and to put it simply, they work. I have helped a countless number of people walk better with this walking tool, and my hope is that I can help you as well via the education presented here. We would like to help you easily understand these concepts whether you come to our clinic or you go to one of our colleagues in the field. Some readers at this point of the book might want to simply jump ahead now to how our walking solution can help you. If so, that starts in Chapter 5. The desire to learn how our walking solution works is obviously understandable. We do focus on other ideas, though, that we believe are very important. Without a lead-in, the how section might not have as much meaning for you. Trust us on that one. We believe it will help many of our readers if we follow along in a chronological order. Having said that, the choice is obviously yours. Either way, please know that this information can help you if you let it. Please do allow this information to help you. Many of us are one step away from another fall, and you deserve better than that. My education and experience. 
and more importantly, how it helps you. As of the time of this writing, it's been almost 17 years ago that I went to Northwestern Medical School's orthotics program. Orthotics is a broad term that extends well beyond the inserts that treat flat feet. Orthotics is a term that can help treat the entire human body, to put it simply. You may have seen or heard of plagiocephaly helmets for babies, or scoliosis braces, for example. These are just two other forms of orthotic treatment that you may know about. Each are provided by true medical specialists worldwide, known as orthotists. In medical school, we learned about how to improve gait mechanics for people with foot drop and other walking problems. After completion of the schooling and a credentialed residency program, I began to see walking problems in a whole new light. You will be seeing walking challenges differently soon as well. The top two reasons you may not know about AFOs. The walking solution we are going to delve into is in front of us all of the time, yet ironically, it is hidden. And no, don't worry, we're not into riddles when we say it is in front of us, but hidden. You will soon see why we say it is hidden, though. After all, who wants to advertise their walking problem? And I doubt that you do. Number one, your AFO can be concealed when in use. An AFO, ankle foot orthosis, is perhaps like nothing else you have seen before. We will show plenty of examples in later chapters. You might be shocked to hear this, but you have most likely walked past hundreds, if not thousands, of people in your lifetime that have worn one. Yet one of the secondary qualities of this walking solution is that you never knew that these other individuals around you had it on. This is the first reason why we believe the public is not yet acutely aware of the existence of AFOs. The AFO user we are talking about walked with a seemingly normal gait right beside you, but the AFO was easily concealed by their pants or other clothing, which is much different than what a cane or walker can offer you. The AFO is streamlined as much as possible for most individuals, which is good if you want to avoid advertising your foot drop or other walking issues to your friends, family, or even to total strangers. How would you feel if you were not forced to advertise your walking problem to others? It would be a great feeling, right? In other cases, a person might vaguely know something about an AFO. You may have a picture of it in your mind, yet most individuals do not know exactly how it helps people walk better, which is understandable. The second reason why people do not know enough about AFOs is much of the previous text written about AFOs has been too medical. As stated, the second reason why we believe people do not know much about AFOs is because the text, until now, has been too medical. Most people are not doctors, which is absolutely fine. However, it is this professional language that can be an issue that definitely gets in our way. We do not need more confusion. We need more clarity in our lives. Millions of people today with walking problems need information which can quickly and easily be applied. That is why... We will make the concepts as simple as possible as we move forward with you. You see, it is the message we understand that we will remember, not the complex medical speak that will quickly and easily be forgotten. This book is just a start for many of our readers. Hopefully, though, you will add our solution to your list of items that can help you walk and even stand better, even if you just utilized our walking solution part-time. An AFO can still help you. You see, some individuals only turn to an AFO for longer walks and do not need it for other activities of daily living, while others turn to an AFO to help them with each step they take. This is because an AFO can support a person so much that it can turn a negative walking situation into a positive one. We have seen this done numerous times, and we are confident it can help you too. What would it be like? if our walking solution ideas only help transform your gait 15%, but we extended that percentage over the next decade. Can you start to see how even a small achievement like this can compound over the years? We believe the difference can be much greater than 15%. Honestly, we just chose that number at random. The difference for some individuals is night and day, as you saw or heard in the testimonial section. We need the simple yet effective solution, not the complex medical blueprint on how it all happens down to the very last detail. Complex medical blueprints might be nice for some people. They have their place, but many individuals just need the solution to be uncomplicated so we can quickly move forward with our lives. You see, there are friends and family to visit and other tasks that need to be put back on today's to-do list. Wouldn't it be great if we could help you to do that? 
you always have a choice. Your independence is important. Having said that, you always have a conscious choice in the application of this walking aid. If you wanted to take it off for physical therapy or other activities of daily living, then this is definitely possible. Might not always be recommended, but it is possible. We just want you to know that people oftentimes have a choice to use it sparingly or alternatively. They can use it with each step they take. Question. If this method of treating foot drops stopped your falls before they happen, would you care if you were a master of knowing every detail about it? In other words, if the AFO helped you walk with more confidence, with less energy expired, and made you safer, that is what would matter most, right? Just like with a car, you do not need to know everything about an automobile and its inner workings to benefit from driving it, correct? The car, just like our solution, can take you places you want to go. This book in a nutshell. Let's begin with two stories about falls and accidents that happen. This may remind you of the struggles you currently have with walking or falling. Then we'll move on to one man's journey to understand his foot drop and other people's balance problems. Perhaps after we illustrate foot drop and its negative consequences through his story, you'll be able to see a parallel to your life experiences from a different point of view. Next, we will look at some falling statistics, followed by a look at traditional walking aids and conventional wisdom that is shared online. We will discuss the good and bad parts of these conventional talking points on the subject, and it is in this way we also hope to help you. We will then jump into some of the ideas behind AFOs and the multitude of ways they can help you walk better. Lastly, we will help give you actionable steps in how you can get this walking aid and give you a few tips about their use. This way, you will be more aware of the universal do's and don'ts that might help you get up to speed more quickly. This book will be worth your time if you are currently struggling with walking issues. Our experience is tested and proven. It is a new approach for many of our readers who desperately need more confidence when they stand or walk but it is not new in the medical field. You will see that our words have the ring of truth. These concepts needed to be shared worldwide decades ago in an easy to read, uncomplicated manner. Perhaps that is why the cane is more popular. You see, canes never came with a dissertation. Let's get you back to doing the stuff you used to do, not keep you stuck with the symptoms of this walking problem. This is what an AFO can help you to do. Again, if you need help to walk better in Illinois, or you already know you want an AFO, then please give us a call. 1-866-746-3552. Otherwise, you can visit us online at www.ranellapo.com to send us an email. The last shameless plug of the book has ended. Chapter 1. No one is immune to falls. As a child, I remember running barefoot on wet pavement. It was a hot summer day, and just like many others, I was enjoying playing outside. I just wanted to run free. I knew nothing of danger, as we unfortunately learn about later in life. Like many boys at seven years of age, I had more physical ability than life experience. At that age, most of us do not understand that bad things actually do happen to good people. What came next, though, was a lesson I would never forget. You see, no matter how fast I thought I was, I could not outrun what was coming. Now that I think back on it, I can remember not listening to the advice my mother had given me that day either. I'm quite sure, in her wisdom, she told me to put my shoes on and not run on the wet pavement. Of course, eager and excited to be outdoors, I didn't stop and listen. What a recipe for disaster it was. I ran at full speed with the water streaming downhill on the dark, slick pavement. The steam was rising on the driveway, and it was the perfect scenario for a crash. The proverbial accident waiting to happen. To this day, nearly 40 years later, I can even remember the exact spot on the driveway where my fall happened. As you already know, pavement is obviously not known for how much it gives. Instead, my body gave as I slipped and hit the ground. I alone was the one that paid the price, yet somehow I was not seriously injured after my fall on the pavement, maybe because I was still a child and I was closer to the ground because of my height. That way the fall distance was not as severe. Or maybe I was just plain lucky that a worse injury did not happen. I remember being scared of falls after that incident. I wasn't mortified, but it was a healthy fear. 
If a fall happened to me routinely, however, wet pavement or not, I am pretty sure it would change me as a person. That fall had made both a physical and mental impact on me, and I would simply never forget the results. As I share my story with you, are you aware of your recent falls? Or are you worried that repeated falls might change you as a person? Unfortunately, this change we are referring to is not a positive one. This is one of those transformations we do not seek. However, if we proactively deal with the triggers that can help induce a fall, then we can take more control of our environment. That is what we want for you. In this way, we can proactively make adjustments that are overwhelmingly positive. This can be done by going straight to the source of your foot drop. You see, we believe that most people address their foot drag or other balance problems via our hands, meaning people mostly treat their walking issue only with a cane or walker. However, there are other solutions that can be of great assistance to you, as you will soon see. This next story is a little longer, but this car crash incident may help you understand your own falls. Let's see if you agree. Our second story is a crash that hits too close to home. The noise from the crash was startling. It was quiet, 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 and then all of a sudden it happened. It was faster than a snake bite. Out of nowhere, an extremely loud screech and bang sound flew through the air. It was the kind of noise that could not be mistaken for anything else. A car had obviously crashed into something directly across the street from our friend's home. You might be having dinner with family or friends, but it was the kind of gut-wrenching sound that shakes you so much that you need to go out and see what happened. All of their neighbors came rushing out of their houses, too, as we all heard the sound. Was someone dead? It was definitely possible. What had just happened? One thing was for certain, there was going to be pain on the other side of that terrible sound. Imagine the intensity of a scene where a driver is slamming on their brakes with both feet and turning the wheel uncontrollably in a frenzy. They are screaming as the terror of an accident quickly approaches. All of this is done as if they are trying to avoid going over the edge of a cliff. In the last moments before the incident occurs, they are in a panic frenzy because they know what is going to happen, and it won't be good. You see, the car crash outside my friend's home was certainly never planned, but it did happen, and it unfortunately happened in a big way. The results of the crash could be dealt with, but the accident itself could not be taken back. Surely we feared that we were going to find a dead body slouched at the wheel with a sound like that. The negative possibilities seemed endless. Not that we wanted a negative ending, but perhaps the driver could have flown through the windshield and would have been found ejected somewhere outside the vehicle. At those initial stages, after the accident, who knew what to expect? I remember my wife being the first one to respond. She picked up on the whole situation very quickly, as she always does. Nothing really ever gets past her keen eye. As she quickly peered out of the window of our friend's home, she told me that the driver had crashed into a tree. Then the person actually got out of their car somehow and ran from the scene. Why the driver ran, we can only speculate. Perhaps the driver had been drunk and ran in fear of facing the negative consequences. Even if a driver is hurt, a lot of alcohol and some adrenaline can help people do some very interesting and irrational things. I have heard stories of people that are intoxicated who have run on a fractured foot or ankle for very long distances from the scene of a crash. All of this just to avoid getting arrested. Other individuals can just lose consciousness while driving. Then later, they can actually become alert again well after the crash has happened. Sometimes, unlucky drivers can become alert again blocks from their home. Somehow, with an internal compass, they have instinctively walked their way back. Anyhow, that night it was very dark out and it was hard to see all the details of the environment around the crash. One thing was clear, however, the car had smashed head on into a large tree. This automobile was definitely not moving without a tow truck. The car unfortunately appeared to be totaled. The thought would come back to me repeatedly. Did that just really happen on our friend's quiet street? Stuff like that never happens in our friend's town. Would a meteorite hit the front lawn next? It all seemed so improbable and out of place. 
Just like most bad things, we know that they happen, but we never really think that they're going to happen to us. The individual who owned the tree came out of his home immediately when it all happened. He actually ran after the driver that night when the crash happened too. Hopefully, that scenario ended peacefully. At any rate, the next morning I looked at the tree with the car being gone. Mind you, I have heard of trees dying just because their bark was removed. So, my hope was that the tree was not going to be damaged and die. To my amazement, in the daylight, the tree looked as good as new, and I just, I just couldn't believe it. It was a testament, I suppose, to the strength of trees. As I looked at the tree in awe, I remembered how bad the car had looked before it was towed. It had thousands of dollars of damage at the very least. It did not take an automobile expert to realize that. I also wondered about what had happened to the driver and hoped they were okay, but I never heard anything more about them. I am sure that crash was something the driver was not expecting to happen that night, nor will they ever forget it. Maybe they had not been drinking. Perhaps they just took their eyes off the road for a moment to look around and this unfortunate result happened. A quick distraction could have occurred for the driver and then all of a sudden, this problem seemingly could have come out of nowhere. If you think about it, the car accident scenario is somewhat similar to what happens with many people who have a bad fall. A fall you encounter can be an accident that feels like a crash. Oftentimes, a fall can happen because of a foot that repeatedly drags along the ground. Sometimes, that is all it takes. You see, if your foot never quite clears on its own, each step is just another opportunity to trip, stumble, and fall. A fall, just like a car crash, cannot be taken back. Other people can lose their balance and fall to the side uncontrollably after being distracted. This is how many people break their hips. You see, the phone rings, someone says something to you, the cat is scaling the leather couch again, and you remembered you forgot to clip its nails. Little noises here or there can be the distraction some people can fall prey to, and then they lose their balance. Heaven forbid we ever get tired at the end of the day and then get distracted while we are already struggling with a walking challenge. Anyone can get distracted for a moment and then the fall can happen. Has a distraction ever helped to cause a fall? For you, distractions are unfortunately a constant. They are right there in the dictionary next to death and taxes. It can all happen so quickly and unexpectedly, unfortunately. You certainly did not plan it. It definitely is not your conscious fault, but you are still the unfortunate person who has to pay the price. In an accident or a crash of any kind, many times one of the objects in the equation does not budge, just like the wet pavement in my situation, or the tree for that unfortunate driver. That is what happens to many people when they fall, too. The ground or other object involved does not budge for that person that falls. As a result, your body can lose the battle, hopefully not the war. Have you ever felt like you had a bad crash that was directly related to a fall? Or do you worry that a trip and fall might happen to you? Do you sometimes wish you had a few seconds back, just before the fall? That way, you could make these minor necessary adjustments in real time to help keep you safe. Perhaps, if you had just done one or two things a little differently, before you lost your balance, you could easily have stopped the fall from happening, right? We will show you in later chapters how to make one or two minor adjustments proactively that can help stop many falls from occurring in the first place. It can seem like the strangest reason for a fall sometimes, too. Wouldn't you agree? However, you can still go through the negative experience nonetheless. It doesn't matter if you're a good person or feel as though you did not deserve it. Falls happen to good people every day. Unfortunately, emergency rooms are frequently visited by fallers. A foot that drags, balance problems, falls, and their negative consequences can all unfortunately happen to many of our readers. Hopefully, the impact of negative consequences of a fall have not happened to you yet. If you struggle with walking problems, the AFO we discuss can be a difference maker for you if you want to stop these key falling triggers from happening. This is a big point that we'll be discussing more in depth later. For now, please note that in your gait, you can have key tipping points that can cause a fall. 
The solution you will be learning about, though, soon can help stop those tipping points from happening. It will soon be clear as day to you. What to expect in the next chapter? We will be moving on now to introduce a more detailed understanding of how walking problems can develop. You will be meeting our character, John. John develops a foot drag that goes from something that is undetectable to a larger issue for him that needs to be dealt with effectively and without delay. Otherwise, John can lose his independence and perhaps much more than that. You see, many people lose much more than the few seconds it takes to fall. They can lose the financial battle of a fall, the emotional and physical battle as well. Let's continue on so we can help you avoid this issue. This next short story can be very informative for you. Let's see if your walking issues match up to John's challenges. As you read the next chapter, as yourself, does his struggle remind you of your own challenges? Or do his walking problems remind you of a loved one that is struggling to move along as they once did? Chances are, your stories might align on some level. Either way, this next chapter will prepare you for a better understanding of AFOs and how they help people with foot drop and other walking issues. The following information can help us find a middle ground on foot drop and falls and position us to find a positive solution in the following chapters. A transformation is on the horizon. Chapter 2. Walking Problems. How did yours develop? Sometimes things happen so gradually it's hard to pinpoint any one specific moment where everything changed. Wouldn't you agree? Kind of like how the seasons change, but you can never really place your finger on a certain day when it all occurred. At other times, it's easy to place your finger on a direct relationship between two things. Like, for example, you can stop and quickly realize how a hip or leg injury might have happened. As a result of that injury, a person can suddenly find that they now have a foot that drags. Or you could have acquired a balance issue as well. In times such as these, it is easy to connect the injury that was sustained with the walking problem. The two are obviously linked. Your walking issue can develop in many different ways. It can be fast or slow in its development. For example, did your foot drop or other walking issue come about all of a sudden? Perhaps from an accident? Did something happen to you that triggered the problem? Or did it sneak in unannounced, seemingly as if it came in through the back door? Perhaps it took you by surprise, over time as it gradually became worse and worse. Either way, a foot that drags, or any other balance problem, can unfortunately be here to stay for you. Not in every instance, but it can stick around for life for many individuals. You see, a foot that drags can sometimes seem like a small, inconsequential issue at first. It can almost be sneaky, meaning it's nothing until it's something. When it becomes something, though, you can realize you have a whole host of other problems as a result. It's just not the foot that drags, the weak ankle or other balance issue, it is everything else that comes along with it. Foot drop creeps up on many people and then we suddenly realize it has gotten much worse, seemingly out of nowhere. Before you know it, you can find that you are limping nearly everywhere all of the time. A foot drop, toe or foot drag, whatever you want to call it, can be kind of like how the rain clouds can sneak in overnight under the cover of the evening sky. All of a sudden in the morning you can quickly realize that you're in the middle of a thunderstorm. However, you're not quite sure when you saw those dark clouds come rolling in. It may seem to you that the last time you looked up there, there was not one cloud in the sky. That's how foot drop develops for many people. It can go unrecognized at first, and after some time goes by, you realize you have a problem. John's story. We're going to continue this chapter by looking at John's foot drop and walking story. John, like many people, developed a walking problem that eventually turned into a major issue for him. We hope his story will allow you to realize you are not alone. Many people all around you struggle mentally and physically with walking issues. It can be quite a heartache that people have to deal with. These walking challenges can develop into a financial strain as well for many of our readers, as you will soon see. 
Sometimes we think we are the only ones suffering when bad things happen to us, but be assured that you're not the only one. There are millions of people who struggle to walk due to a foot drop or other walking issue. Just look up and down any hallway at a hospital or a doctor's office and you will see it. People with canes and walkers struggling to do what used to be easy for them. Maybe this upcoming story will help you to understand your own walking challenges a little bit better. We tell you his story in an effort to see if your experience may be similar. For many people, they need to come to grips with a walking and falling problem before they act. If we substituted your name for John's, would this be an accurate summary of some of your struggles? Let's see if you agree. John's walking challenges. John woke up this morning and the issue was there again. His foot problem was one of the first things on his mind. John, still lying in bed, glanced at his phone checking his messages and the daily news, but it was hard to concentrate. His foot drag issue came to the forefront of his mind again. How could it not dominate his thoughts? It progressed to the point that he could think about little else. There simply was no way around it. If it were only a dream, maybe I could wake up, John thought to himself, but he was awake, and the problem was unfortunately still there. Ignore it, and it will go away, right? In the past, John could shake off most health concerns by saying to himself, if I just give this issue some time, it will most likely go away by itself. And, luckily for John, most other health issues he had experienced, the sore shoulder, the back pain, the previous knee scrapes, they all had happened independently and would eventually go away by themselves too. He just had to rest, be patient, and things would eventually work themselves out. So this became how John dealt with a lot of health concerns. Ignore them and eventually, they'll go away by themselves. However, becoming self-aware of your gait and understanding where your problems are hiding when you walk is important. In a sense, that way of thinking, the just ignore it method, was the start to a bigger problem but John did not realize it at the time. This approach to certain health issues had become his default way of coping with them. The just ignore it method seemed to usually work when he was younger, but he was developing a blind spot by not seeking out any medical advice. You see, not all health issues will go away without treatment. It was easy to understand how this coping method developed over time. After all, who wants to constantly rush to the doctor every time something seemingly small comes up? Oh, I bumped my knee. Time to rush to the emergency room. Not every problem needs that kind of a solution. Why kill a fly with a hammer, John thought. A foot drag that only gets worse. This latest health issue, a walking problem, was much different though. As John tried to ignore it and let time pass, it would not just go away on its own. It was different, different in a bad way. This one, unfortunately, had staying power. And if John was completely honest with himself about it, he had to admit that it was only getting worse with time and not better. John's foot would only start to raise up sometimes now. And when his foot did come up, it would only do a part way. It was a hit or miss. Unlike the problem showing up maybe every other day, as it had done in weeks prior, now it was happening most of the time. John definitely could not raise his toes on mental command like he used to, and it was the fact of life for him now. This physical ailment had now started to become a mental handicap as well. There was no denying it. He had begun to think about it constantly. It was, without a doubt, his elephant in the room. If he did not think about how he was walking, he simply might trip. You see, he had to constantly be aware of how his foot was moving everywhere he went so something bad did not happen. As you can probably guess, the negative thoughts were mounting and it became a far bigger issue with each day that passed. John had never thought this would happen to him in a million years, yet here he was. He would think to himself, here I am, life's been good to me, and there have been some definite drawbacks. This foot issue is with me now, and I need to find a solution. Nobody ever really talked about foot drop to him before. So, how could he know how to deal with it? He didn't even really understand what it was and how it all occurred. But he now clearly understood that his foot did not work. As John would walk, day in and day out, he would think to himself, it shouldn't be this hard. I can still get along okay, but I don't deserve this. Maybe I won't go to my cousin's birthday party today, just so people won't stare. I don't need these side glances from people anymore either. I just don't feel like hiding my problem and acting like everything is okay because it's not okay. God knows, I just don't need another hassle right now. Walking problems that change you as a person. 
This walking problem began to change John's character on some level. He became much more reclusive, avoiding friends and family more and more all the time. The toe drag, the stumbles, the multiple falls, they all had started to grab a hold of him in a way that left him feeling increasingly antisocial. It was a taxing feeling, to say the least, one that left him feeling depressed more and more often. It was a far cry from the cheerful, friendly, confident person John used to be before this walking problem happened to him, John had always prided himself on being the problem solver, the person who could fight through and be okay in the end. But this issue left him feeling beyond frustrated, without any sense of control. Each day he noticed it was getting more difficult to perform life's routine tasks. For example, doing the laundry now became harder. Working in the yard was now more difficult. The list of simple tasks that got harder due to his foot drag could easily go on and on if he sat down to write it all out. On top of that, a solution was nowhere in sight. What an emotional desperation. In the beginning, when this all had started, it was easy to make excuses. At first, John had caught his toe a couple times when he was walking with his wife. He could think it was just the curb or it was just the sidewalk that was the issue that made him stumble. Perhaps he wasn't looking where he was going because of a distraction. He would occasionally let out a small laugh about being clumsy, and in the beginning when he did stumble, he would easily recover each time and things were fine. The problem had not yet registered for him. No sweat, everything's fine, John thought. After all, I'm tired from the day I had at work. His shoe might have felt a little loose, perhaps. He felt exhausted after most work days anyways. So no wonder he did not see the impediment in the road that he had tripped on. You know, the local government should really be doing a better job with our tax dollars and fix the sidewalk, you would think. You see, it was usually easy to find an external excuse because he had not fully come to grips with what was happening to him yet. But as the weeks went by, John found that his toe was dragging more and more as he tried to walk. Sometimes, he would not only trip, but he would fall as a result of this foot drag problem. The two were apparently linked. As mentioned, the first few trips or falls did not exactly sink in mentally for John. However, his attitude finally changed one day when he was walking barefoot from his bedroom to the bathroom. He stumbled again during this walk. There was no curb or sidewalk to blame this time. His foot was dragging and it was plain as day. In this most recent accident, John didn't just trip. Unfortunately, this time he fell forward and it was bad. The only positive was that he had time to brace the fall with his hands. John's latest fall resulted in a trip to the emergency room, though, and that was the thing that really got his attention. You see, it is not exactly ever on the day's to-do list to have an ambulance come pick you up. He never thought it would come to an ambulance ride, but it did. The weight of the burden he was carrying now had a life of his own. I am getting older, but this should not be happening to me right now, should it? John wondered. I can no longer blame the thing that is outside of me, John thought. That's the easy way out. Whatever this issue is, it has caught up with me, and I need to look internally now, face this, and move forward with medical guidance of some kind. It was like an invisible burden that had come to life, seemingly small at first, but terribly persistent. John had a lot of questions, but no real answers. Was it a muscle that had gone bad? Or some sort of thing that was related to a nervous system issue? He could see why people online alluded to the fact that his foot drag was like a silent killer. What if he had hit his head this last time? What is going to happen if one of these times he does not brace his fall with his hands and he goes head first into something? Not that he wanted to dwell on it, but he could have been seriously injured in his most recent fall. Or it is possible that he could have died in a worst case scenario. Falls lead to traumatic brain injuries and that is just a fact. The depths of hell had a grip on his foot, it seemed. The old John inside of him was desperately trying to reach up for a rope, something to pull him out of this dark place he found himself in. Why is this happening to me? John asked himself. In fact, he found himself asking why practically every day now. He would ask himself this question from the time he first woke up until when he finally would fall asleep. Maybe a positive moment here and there would pop into his daily life, but the foot drag was so persistent that it always felt like it was pulling him down. It was relentless. He was wishing the answer would just come to him. Why shouldn't it? John was a good person who deserves answers, but of course, the answer did not come to him yet. What an absolute downer. 
But something whispered to John that when you are going through hell, keep moving forward. Answers to your foot drop and balance problems are available if you keep looking. John was a good man. He was smart, educated, and had a lot of life experience. But he just didn't know a lot about health stuff. And honestly, why should he? He had never really faced a problem like this before. As mentioned, most of his health issues usually came and went on their own. John develops a marching step. As a result of this foot drag, John developed a marching step when he walked, so his toe would not drag. This furthered the notion that a walking problem had truly arrived, settled in, and basically taken residence. In other words, he would high-step his foot so it would not impede his walking. You see, in his efforts to come up with a solution on his own, something told him this extra little move could be a temporary fix. It could help him stay out of more trouble. Did it look a little odd? Yes. But he did it anyways out of necessity. He would just lift up his knee up a little higher with each and every step. This little extra effort would help clear his foot from dragging on the floor. John knew that dragging his foot like this would eventually lead to more unexpected falls. After all, he reasoned, if the foot did not drag, then he would not trip. And if he did not trip, he would not fall. And if he did not fall, John would not need to go on another ambulance ride. No ambulance rides meant no humiliation and no money spent on medical bills. After all, an ambulance ride and a one-day hospital stay is no joke, even if you have pretty good insurance. Therefore, this high-step move he created seemed very logical to him. But how long could he keep this move up? Indefinitely? Probably not. His marching step was characterized as if he needed to walk over an object that was in his way. But the problem was, there was no object there in front of him acting as an impediment. The thing that was in his way was his own foot, and he knew it. The foot would drag along the ground, and this would ultimately trigger his overall walking and balance problems. Throughout the day, John relied on his marching step like a crutch. It felt like he would have to pull up his knee higher and higher as the day wore on. Perhaps it just felt like he had to work harder at it because he got more tired at the end of the day. Or the mental burden of constantly having to do the move became taxing in and of itself. But hey, who cares? It works for now, he thought. I can still get from point A to point B, and that matters a lot. Life simply cannot stop as a result of this foot drag, he thought. John marched everywhere he went. How could he not? It was a decent temporary fix, though. Except the problem with the marching step was that John was in no marching band. There was no music playing. There was definitely not a performance for the public. Eventually, this exaggerated step began to drain more of his energy, both emotionally and physically. No wonder he was more tired. It was not like he could take a day off from it. To him, the marching step was obviously why he had no energy left at the end of the day. It is not the self-image we want for ourselves, he thought. I doubt this is my calling to be in a marching band, he would sometimes sarcastically say out loud in his own company. John may have felt a bit safer in a sense with his extra movement. However, he knew this marching step was an inefficient gait that cost him in other ways. And it was no cure, that was for sure. He was still stumbling and losing his balance sometimes. The foot drag and its accompanying stumbles had happened often enough now that a seed of doubt was beginning to grow in John's mind. It was more than that, really. It was taking over for him mentally because he did not know of any other solution yet. It became a mental battle just as much as it was a physical challenge. The seed of doubt was starting to really wear on him. It was as if he had a set of shackles on that gained one pound of weight every day. Why was he forced to drag this baggage around? Who wanted to constantly hike their knee up when they walked, John thought. Let's be real, John continued. That little marching step may have worked to an extent, but it didn't look natural either. It was a constant struggle to mask the marching step in public. When people did notice, he felt ashamed. When the doubt starts winning. Yes, the doubts had finally taken root. If John was honest with himself, the doubt was actually quite severe. The mental torment was like a quickly growing weed, the worst of its kind. A weed so deeply rooted it could not be pulled from the center of his lawn. It was like the roots of this weed were wrapped around the center of the planet Earth 100 times over. John walked each day with a little bit more doubt than he'd had the day before. 
It was as if the old John was a star he could no longer see in the night sky. He knew deep down that this was no way to live. It's like I am constantly running against the wind, he thought. Something wasn't right, and avoiding and ignoring the problem had not helped. He was increasingly tired, embarrassed, and avoiding many of the things he used to enjoy doing. Things that once came easily to him were now a struggle. The struggle was real, very real. It was increasingly difficult to hide that struggle from others, too. With each day that passed, he was growing more anxious about when he might next stumble or fall. It got to the point where he started to think that he should not even try to walk, because he quickly saw the negative side of walking more than he saw the positive. It was as if a shadow hand was on his shoulder, nudging him back down into his seat when his former self would have wanted to get up and move around. The old John was obviously replaced now with someone new. I would rather not deal with this, and that's just the truth of it, he thought. But I know I need to do something, and I have to be smart. I need to be proactive here, unless I want to keep dragging my foot. If I drag the foot even once or twice a day, it will mean I can still keep tripping and falling all over the place. The longer I wait, the more time I give this a chance to really beat me, something told him. Just because I'm not falling right now does not mean I will not fall in the next 10 minutes. But at the same time, he also knew just because I do not have the solution now does not mean I won't come up with it very soon. I have solved too many problems to quit now, John thought. It was like he had good and evil on each shoulder. Part of him would say, this is just what happens when you get older. While the other side of him wanted to find a way to fight this walking problem. The good side wanted him to flip the issue on its head somehow. There had to be a way. He simply did not want to give up hope. Who does, for that matter? John simply did not want the walking problem to win. Falls may have scored some points, but he was determined to win this game, somehow. Hopefully, the second half of this game would yield a different result. Somehow, maybe the end result could be more in his favor if he kept looking for answers. The search for answers online. As most people do when they have questions nowadays, John turned to the internet. He knew he could not be the only one with this foot drag problem. As he read up on the term itself, foot drag, he learned that it was synonymous with the terms foot drop and drop foot. People would sometimes use the terms interchangeably. Foot drop seemed to be the term that most medical professionals used instead of foot or toe drag, but really was all referring to the same thing in the end. Foot drop did seem to describe the problem, although foot drag made plenty of sense to John. No need to get overly complicated here on terms. My foot just doesn't work like it used to. Call it whatever you want to. I just know I have a problem here, John thought. John found that there was a hodgepodge of different information online about devices and strategies, and frankly, it was kind of overwhelming. The problem was that there was so much information and from so many different sources, none of which was as good as a recommendation from a friend or a professional that he trusted. He could not differentiate between the hype and what was real with all that he had read. There were foot braces mentioned, walking aids, special chair lifts, all kinds of stuff. While all of it sounded interesting on some level, he did not think he needed a ton of different products. John just wanted the solution of being able to walk better. You do not want the drill, something told him. You want the hole that the drill creates. In other words, John just knew he wanted to walk better as a result of whichever product he chose. If he was going to buy something, he wanted the one or two products or devices that would do the most good for him. But what would those products be? John was also worried that the customer service from some of these online ads might be sketchy at best. Were those online companies credentialed? Was any of this stuff returnable if it did not help? It didn't seem worth the risk, and he did not have the money to waste on gimmicks that might not work. Then John pondered the idea of a device he was already familiar with. What about a cane? Or a walker? I'm not exactly loving the idea of having to use one, but I know Uncle Joe had a cane and it helped. It was not complicated either. Uncle Joe just picked it up and he could walk better. He did not have to wade through a bunch of online stuff. Everyone knows canes help people walk better. But is a cane or walker going to be enough? Is it the right choice for me? My issue seems to be with my foot, he thought. There has to be something else that works too. Plus, I know I keep hearing stories about people falling even when they use a cane. 
Am I going to be one of those people that tries and then gives up quickly when it comes to a walking solution? I don't want to give up enjoying my life and walking freely. I want to be mobile again without having to always worry about falling. Walking canes are good, but why does this foot drop need to also take one of my hands from me too, John thought. Over time, I will always have to reach for the cane. Each and every time I want to get up and move around to use a cane is a lot to ask, but I will do it if necessary. I know canes work, otherwise nobody would use them. I just need to learn more. In the end, I just cannot settle. That is just not who I am, John thought to himself. Too many riddles to face. John kept trying to find a solution to his problem, but the onslaught of online information became a point of frustration, which made it even harder for him to make a choice. To put it simply, it was all too confusing. Will this product over here help me or not? I see a short description and a picture of a device online, but I'm still confused. It is kind of like a riddle to me if it will work or not. I need a true expert, John thought wisely, someone who is licensed and can make the complex simple, someone who can give me good advice, and someone who will stand behind their solution. You know, someone who can give me a solid warranty of some kind. What John learned from online support groups. John's online research did help him learn a few things, however. One of the best things he read about was not necessarily about products, but it was about finding the online support groups for fall prevention and foot drop. The support groups would help him identify with his current struggles. The people in these groups would help guide him to more resources he needed too. You see, in these online groups, there would be independent contributors who struggled to walk just like he did, and they would share their experiences. John learned that at times, some people would struggle with a weak knee as well as a foot drop. Sometimes when these other individual contributors walked, they would state that their weakened knee would actually give out on them, meaning it could sometimes bend forward uncontrollably. In other words, buckle, which would be the beginning of a fall if they did not catch themselves. Other contributors' knees might snap back, hyperextend, along with having the primary issue of having a foot drop. Many people in online support groups had a knee issue of some kind. Some did not. It wasn't always straight foot drop. It could be a mix of the foot, knee, or ankle that seemed to cause a fall, while others, perhaps, did not yet realize that they had this kind of secondary problem. Some folks in John's favorite online support group said that they would also fall sideways sometimes. That was a new concept for him, as John's issue was mainly with catching his toe and falling forward. This sideways fall would happen to some online contributors without them even taking a step. It was like their ankle would give out on them or something. It could be very unexpected how it all occurred. Or maybe some of the online contributors could not control their weight line from moving too far to the side if and when they got distracted. As a result, they could not keep themselves centered when they stood up. These individuals might suddenly go down like a ton of bricks because their ankles were weak and they could not recover in time. Some people broke their hips from falling sideways. The people who fell sideways predominantly seemed to have broken hips more frequently. This made a lot of sense to John when he stopped and thought about it. Others even remarked that they did not even know that they had a secondary issue. This is because their foot drag seemed so prevalent. Many overlooked the problems that would hide in their gait until their therapist or doctor pointed it out to them. Online, John learned that people would use the words involved side. That term, he realized, was the side where he had the walking issue, primarily. This for him was where the toe drag existed. A few other contributors would say that they had a bilateral walking issue. Apparently, unilateral was a foot drag on one side, and bilateral meant having a foot drop on both sides. Interestingly, John learned that some individuals with foot drop did his marching step too. His heart went out to them, of course, but in a way, he was relieved that he was not the only one. It was the feeling that he was not alone anymore in his struggle. John could bounce questions off of them and get some good feedback. You see, some people who had a bilateral foot drop would do a knee hike not only on one side, but on the other side as well. John definitely knew he was not alone in his struggle. He, unlike most other people, 
could appreciate the depths of their struggle. Some would describe how they would almost do a half circle step with their involved side. John was not accustomed to this move, but after reading about it, he started to see this half moon step everywhere he went. Some people would do the half moon step instead of hiking the knee. It was just another method of getting from point A to point B with a foot drop. That, too, was a common theme among those who struggled to walk like they used to. Hiding from the public. Just like it had been for so many others, John's marching move, the knee hike, had become part of his muscle memory. You see, after repeating the move so many times, his brain just got used to it. Yep, kind of just like how I get into the car now and don't have to even think about putting my seatbelt on, he thought. I do it automatically, just like other people do in the online group. I just don't even think about it anymore. That can't be a good thing. Also, like many others who share their stories, he tried to hide his walking move from others. After all, who wants to advertise this, he thought. Hiding his extra move. When he was in public, he would self-consciously do the knee hike in a way that was masked so everyone wouldn't stare at him or at least he thought people would stare less. Unfortunately, he had become a professional at hiding it since he had done that move so many times in the past. Sometimes, John would even test drive the half moon step if he thought that was less obvious. Maybe people would stare less if the other move keeps my knee closer to the floor, he thought. It was not the kind of shopping experience he had hoped for, one where he had to choose which extra move looked better on him in public. The secondary effects of foot drop. It was kind of amazing how all of these secondary things came about from having a foot that dragged. Other things were seemingly set into motion because of his walking problem and he knew it. The marching, his depression, so many oh by the ways had come forward from the ether that he had to deal with. It was eye-opening for John to say the least. He had thought about all the activities he pretty much had given up on. My walks with my wife are basically gone now, and that is a real disappointment. That can't be good for my heart either. Sitting for extended periods of time cannot be good for anyone's health in general. If this thing beats me, I could have a rapid decline, he thought. His toe drag was like a thief. It stole his confidence. It was stealing his dignity, especially when he was in public. It stole his energy, preventing him from doing the things he loved. Living a healthier, more active lifestyle seemed out of reach. Since when is it okay that this marching step has become part of who I am? John asked himself. And am I just going to be fine with this? Or am I going to do something about it? It was finally at this point that John's mind changed. Something came forward in him that made it all click. It was like the wind spoke to him or something. Some force that was seemingly beyond him wanted to act now. It was almost like he did not even need to think about his options anymore. He wasn't pushing against using a walking aid or getting help. Something seemed to be pulling him now toward an eventual answer instead. He knew it was time to go in and get medical treatment. He would go today. Conclusions from his research and changes John made. John tried to make as much sense of the online blogs as he could. Overall, He still couldn't help but think people should be focusing more on the foot drop part of this. People never seem to talk about solutions that address the actual problem, the foot itself. Everything online and most blogs seem to be about getting by in other ways and not improving upon this foot problem. John had come a long way mentally and started to make some good changes. He got himself a cane to use sparingly. He started to work with a physical therapist. Many positive things started developing for him with regards to his foot drop. He ran through his checklist in his head. My physical therapist has helped me to strengthen muscles and has prepared me for certain situations. But unfortunately, my foot drop is still there. That part has not, unfortunately, been fixed with therapy. My cane, that I prefer to only use when going up curbs or stairs, helps me in those moments when I lose my balance. My house is clean and well lit. My meds are under control and I have handrails and anti-slip mats in place now, he thought. Plus, I can see fine with my contact lenses on. I never really go without those anyways. So, I count my sight as being good, he added. The advice from online sources, as overwhelming as it had seemed at times, had played its part. But it still was not enough. It did not solve this damn foot drop problem. John would eventually get more medical treatment and come to important conclusions in his own time. 
He eventually found his light at the end of the tunnel when it came to his walking challenge. He first, though, had to come to grips with everything that was happening to him. Perhaps like you might be coming to grips with your own walking challenges. The process can be its own, and it can definitely be something people have to process before they move on to their next steps. Can you relate to John's story? Does John's story remind you of yourself in some ways? Or does it remind you of a friend or a loved one that is struggling with the walking problem? The good news is that there are remedies in place that can serve you. However, sometimes we just have to let them act by not getting in our own way. Where are you in that process? Is your walking issue starting to become a bigger problem than you may have first anticipated? Or have you known for some time that you needed to act but did not know exactly what to do about it? Important questions for you to consider. Is your toe drag, in other words, foot drop, planting a seed of doubt in your mind when you walk? Are you doing the marching step, also known as the high stepage gait pattern? Do you do the half moon circle step sometimes? Is your toe drag trying to quietly take life's moments away from you? How will that play out for you in the long run? Will the toe drag, trip and fall scenario help or hurt you? I think we already know the answer to some of these questions, and chances are there are even certain elements of John's story that could have rung close to home for you. Hopefully his story brought some of these things forward for you. If so, we can start to focus on a solution that we have mastered over the years for our patients. If you have a walking problem, it could help you as well. What is in store in the next chapter? The upcoming solution we are talking about could have helped John. We know that it has helped our patients for years, but some of our readers will need to become more familiar with the upcoming ideas first before pursuing our solution. Remember, you are not John from our story, obviously. This book is in your hands. If you want to learn some extremely helpful information, keep reading. It could help save millions of people from the terrible costs of falls. The following solution can help provide you with less fear, better walking, and can help eliminate the marching or half moon step. In addition, our walking solution can help you with improved standing balance, more energy, fewer ambulance rides, and lower health expenses. That is what it can help you achieve. However, the transformation of your life as a result of these achievements could be priceless. Chapter 3. Falling Statistics Walking problems are widespread and costly. The walking issues you may have and the fear of falls are very real. So, too, are the negative results of these falls. We do not want to sound negative, but there's a lot of evidence out there that illustrates how extensive and devastating falls are. For example, the CDC cited Florence et al.'s 2018 article in the Journal of American Geriatric Society in which the authors noted that in 2015, the total medical cost for falls totaled more than $50 billion. Do you think that the cost of falls will get worse for us as a society if we do not make a change? Meaning, if we stay on our current course, we know that the number of older adults in the world will continue to rise. As a result of the number of older adults who fall will continue to rise as well, unless we can start to think differently. The question is, where will you be in the weeks, months, or even years to come? Just know that if you have a walking problem, there is still hope. Please read on with us to learn more. A new method of fall prevention and walking improvement needs to be introduced globally to help solve this problem or at least introduced in a new way to millions of people. Some medical professionals and AFO users do know about it, but most individuals who fall, unfortunately, do not. People need a walking solution that is not new and has been tested. We do not need a gimmick, you know, something that is pretending to help. We need a solution that is readily available to people and has a commonly known existence, even if that existence primarily exists and is understood in the medical community as the time of this writing. You see, broken bones, ambulance rides, and emergency room visits only begin to tell the tale. You can fill in the blanks on how bleak the picture can get after a fall for many individuals. It will only take you a few minutes to come to those conclusions. 
The physical, emotional, and financial drain of a fall can be unbearable. It will literally break the bank for many individuals and their families. With all of the other tremendous financial stresses of today, people do not need another thing trying to take their money that they've actually managed to keep. Wouldn't you agree? If for no other reason, investigate this walking solution so that you can help yourself avoid this financial side of this trap. The number one reason for bankruptcy has to do with medical debt per a study presented by CNBC's Dan Mangan. With the number of people falling, this could very well be the case. Unfortunately, many of us don't want to think about falls and walking problems. It can be really depressing. On one hand, it can be very understandable to mentally avoid this topic. So many of us temporarily push these walking challenges out of our minds in the short term. Maybe I just won't walk as much today, you might tell yourself. I wonder what's on television. If I don't walk, then I know I won't fall. There is usually no immediate pain in thinking thoughts like this, but later on, this approach to walking problems and falls can catch up with you. Who really wants to dive into those painful thoughts right now anyways? Nobody wants to self-induce a panic. But if we all keep ignoring our walking problems, we will lose in the long term. The war against the walking problem will be lost, and we do not deserve this outcome. Could you see that as being true? If you have studied falls on any level, you may have visited the CDC's website. The information there is eye-opening, to say the least. If you have not, we suggest checking out their website when you have time. Here are just a few facts that are on their website currently. 1. More than one out of four older people fall each year, but less than half tell their doctor. 2. Falling once doubles your chances of falling again. 3. One out of every five falls causes a serious injury, such as broken bones or a head injury. 4. From 2007 to 2016, fall death rates in the United States increased by 30%. 5. More than 95% of hip fractures are caused by falling, usually by falling sideways. We will cut off the statistics here. However, we know that there are a lot more out there if we even started looking for just a few minutes. We are sure that you could find more with a search online too, right? Sometimes it is easier to just not focus on the hard stuff like falls and walking problems. It's not easy to stare these walking problems down. Way too many people think, this walking problem is what's supposed to happen because I'm getting older now. In other words, the light inside of some people is going out and they are unfortunately saying, I'm starting to give up. Have you ever seen others give up hope before? Despite the fact that you knew that there was a better way to help them. Many people believe these negative thoughts because nobody has come along and shown them a better way. Maybe some people are not open to new ideas because half the time a slick salesman is on the other side of these new ideas ready to cash in. Over time, some of us just stop trying to learn new things. However, we hope that is not you. These ideas can help you. Please do not confuse the fact that you're not falling right now with the fact that you could fall in the next 10 seconds when you stand up and start taking some steps. Your walking problem is not like a fire where you can quickly run to safety and the issue is done with. It is a problem that is linked to you physically. As you have been reminded, it can be connected to you mentally and monetarily as well. For those with a toe drag or falling problem, it is like trying to escape your own shadow. It's always there, no matter what you seem to do. You cannot seem to get rid of it. It's silent, and it can be deadly. Please read on into the next section of this book. If you have a foot that drags, or if you have another balance issue, one day the statistics above could very well introduce themselves to you. You deserve better, and we believe we have a way to help you coming up. Chapter 4 the good and bad aspects of traditional walking aids and conventional wisdom. The majority of people in public have unconsciously been taught to think a certain way about traditional walking aids. Let's see if you agree. Many people turn to a cane or walker because that is what they know. As you already are aware, there is a certain level of comfort in going forward with something that you are already familiar with. After all, how do you voluntarily turn to a walking solution that you don't really know about yet, right? Makes total sense. Many people turn to a cane or walker as their primary means of helping them walk with a more balanced gait. We are not saying that these walking aids are ineffective forms of treatment. We all know canes and walkers can add value to people's lives. Wouldn't you agree? 
At this moment, what we are saying, though, is that canes or walkers are more traditionally accepted walking aids. Therefore, to most people, canes and walkers are at the top of the list by default. Before reading this book, what walking aids would have come to mind first for you? If there were a Hall of Fame for walking devices, canes and walkers would be those with the top number of votes. They would be the Hall of Famers, if you will. Let's see if you can agree with us in the next section. We will discuss why people use canes and walkers predominantly. Accepted norms in society. Certain things in life, such as a walker or a cane, become accepted norms once we see them often enough. Other accepted norms in societies are like cars, for example. When it is time to buy a new car, people will probably go with the names of the automobiles that they have seen the most over time. It is what you know because the advertising was catchy or a friend or loved one had a particular automobile that worked out well for them. As a child, certain lines of thinking are both directly and indirectly introduced and accepted by us as well. The language you speak, for example, is probably not something you would ever second guess. It is embedded in our minds very early on. It was all around you from birth, and even before that, actually. It was what your family members and friends spoke, and by extension, it is what we all learned. It was only natural that you accepted its validity without even thinking twice about it. The same could obviously be held as true for Spanish or French, or perhaps the roughly 6,500 other languages in existence today. We learn about things that surround us. As a result, oftentimes we automatically accept them. Another example of embedded thinking would be how we think about canes and walkers. We will present the case and see if you think that it is logical. As a child, you may have seen your grandmother or grandfather or another older adult use a one-handed walking cane or a two-handed walker for support. Whether you realize it or not, the idea was planted in your mind at a young age. Canes and walkers help people walk better. This was the message many of us indirectly absorbed from an early age. You may have thought, that is just what you use when you have a walking problem. This idea of using a cane or a walker was therefore gradually accepted unconsciously as you got older. The walking problem then was most likely not your problem yet. It was somebody else's issue to deal with. Wouldn't you agree? Over the years, you probably started to see more and more people using canes and walkers in public, or perhaps you saw the same older adult using the same cane or walker for a longer period of time. The cane and the walker were the assisted devices that were in between you and your loved ones, perhaps. Nobody made a big issue out of it. It was the accepted walking aid because that is what people saw. There is truth in the phrase, seeing is believing. You can even make a cane more fun these days by dressing it up. After all, fashionable canes can make it more fun, right? Some flair or a snazzy decoration helps take the sting of using the device away from the conscious mind. Just to be clear, canes and walkers do help people, but the problem still remains that a person can feel very unsteady on their feet even if they use a handheld device, and that is a huge problem. If canes and walkers were a cure-all, we wouldn't have people falling every second in the United States. Could you see that as being true? The problem is, you can have extreme worries about falls even when you use a cane or walker and we deserve better. That is a big takeaway we are trying to point out. One that you might already know is true. Physical therapy as a means of helping with foot drop and balance issues. Physical therapy can be great for the right person. There is no doubt at all about that. The positive benefits that come from physical therapy in the hand of a licensed therapist or therapy assistant are extremely important. It almost goes without saying these days. The same is absolutely true of occupational therapy as well. Many of us can benefit from these therapists when we need to rehab a weakened muscle or injured body part. Your therapist can give you exercises to work on or perhaps focus on strengthening and stretching. They can even give you cues to think about when you are in rehab working on your daily occupations. A physical therapist, physical therapy assistant, or occupational therapy can do all of this and a whole lot more. However, we ask you, what do you do when your muscles simply won't rehab back to 100%? What do you do when you still have a drop foot or toe drag after being in physical therapy, for example? What do you do when you have a foot drop or side-to-side -side balance problem and still want to go on a long walk? Do you just get a single-handed walking cane or two-handed walker and call it a day? Problem solved? 
keeping your house or living area clean. This is another idea you will read about on many blogs or hear about from your doctor perhaps. This is without a doubt a positive idea. It makes total sense. If the XYZ thing is not in the middle of the floor to trip on, then your chances of tripping on it go way down, right? It's a fair statement and we're not trying to say otherwise. Clean homes are good. When it comes to walking problems, good logic here. Question, does a clean house fix your foot drop or help stop your falling to the side? Get your eyes checked. Getting your eyes checked helps, no doubt about it. A vision problem can definitely impact your balance and walking. When depth perception and range become harder to gauge, that can contribute to falls. When you cannot see very well, it becomes much easier to trip and fall. That is absolutely a fair statement. Keeping your living area well lit. Having good light to help you see better is also important, no question. Using floor lighting or perhaps using light switches that glow will help many people with walking problems. You should never have to navigate through an area filled with shadows, as that, just like poor eyesight, can make you more vulnerable to falls. Of course, even if your vision is 20-20 and your house is lit up brightly like a Broadway stage, you can still fall. One critical problem has still not been solved. Yes, you guessed it. You still have a foot drop or other balance problems oftentimes. Install handrails, non-slip mats, and safety-proof your home. Handrails are good. Non-slip mats are also helpful. In fact, having things around in your house that are designed to help you not to slip are a great idea. Who could ever deny this information, right? Making sure your home is as safe as possible is obviously recommended. That is pretty sound advice. If there are areas within your home that could benefit from handrails, by all means, add them if possible. If floor surfaces are slippery, add non-slip mats or treads when and where you can. Get rid of the things that you know may make you fall. Make the travel routes throughout your home as clean and as clear as possible. Doing as much as you can to improve your safety by whatever means possible will always be sound advice. Get your medications checked. As people age, your need to potentially change your medication matters or, at the minimum, getting the type and dosages of medications routinely checked by your doctor is obviously a good idea. This is some more sound advice. Again, we are not your doctor, but it is common knowledge that medications need to be monitored for people. Being dizzy from medication can obviously lead to a fall. This topic can be found on most online blogs regarding fall prevention and for good reason. It makes sense. This is good, but we would argue that this is more of an alertness issue that is being dealt with as some people get drowsy from medications. Otherwise, we invite you to search online for the phrase, does foot drop resolve with medication? Some balance problems might, but foot drop is a more difficult reach. Chances are, the answers that come up will be way too technical, vague, or flat. We won't rule it out as a solution for some individuals, but we can tell you that many of the patients we see cannot control their foot drop merely from a new medication that they are taking. Furthermore, taking the wrong medications or too much or too little of something can hinder you or cause other problems. Hopefully one day a cure-all drug will make these struggles go away. However, at this time we are not aware of the existence of this medication. Investing in a walking cane or two-handed walker. Canes and walkers have helped people for a countless number of years. It's a tool that is relatively inexpensive and has stood the test of time. By all means, try and use one when and where you think it is applicable. This idea of using this assistive device is so ingrained in people's culture everywhere, if we talk about it too much, you will think that we're insulting your intelligence. They are effective for improved balance, but a cane or walker does not pick the foot up or stop your ankle from rolling to the side necessarily. A bigger point that needs to be made. You may use your marching step or another move to clear your foot when you walk. You might use a cane or walker. You may have a clean house. You may go to physical therapy regularly. You might have handrails throughout your home, keep the house brightly lit, enviously decluttered, and loaded with every safeguard you can think of. You might be doing all of these things. If so, then that's very helpful and we applaud your efforts. Seriously, you're doing positive things. But guess what? Yes, we're going to say it one last time. The foot drop and other balance problems can still be there. The thief is still lurking around, ready to take life's moments away from you. The fear can still be there as well. The fear of falling, that is. So, 
we ask you again, why don't we address the foot that is dragging or the ankle that is giving out to the side? Why don't we go right to the source of these issues? When was the last time someone came up to you and started talking about the importance of solving that exact issue, the foot drop itself, or balance via your feet and ankles? For many readers, the answer is that no one has ever advised them on dealing with their foot drop directly. Possibly a physical therapist or a physician brought it up amongst many other ideas. But for many readers, this issue is not stressed with you enough until now, or the ideas behind AFOs have not quickly been absorbed, which is a problem as well for many people who fall. A preview of what is coming next. The following chapter holds a key piece of information that will help you. It will hopefully help you understand the point of this whole book from a different point of view. Let's move toward addressing the foot drop itself. It's time to help you learn more about the concepts behind an AFO. We'll illustrate how they can transform your gait and help you eliminate falls. Chapter 5. Please do note that there is a PDF attached. We have images and diagrams in Chapter 5 and 6, and it will help you if you're able to reference that material. Think like a mechanic getting to the source of your problem. If your car was broken in any way, what would be one of your first thoughts? I should probably take my car straight into the mechanic, right? You probably would not wait to see if the flat tire or other engine problem would go away by itself. You see, that kind of thinking might get a person into even more trouble. Waiting for a serious problem to go away by itself might be something our character John did with his walking problem back in chapter two. Clearly, if your car's check engine light was on, the unspoken expectation would be that your mechanic would go straight to the source of your problem, right? In other words, they would pop the hood of your car and fix the exact reason for your check engine light. In other words, the mechanic would not beat around the bush as it relates to your car. If they only fix the other peripheral issues of your car, the tail light, the bumper scratch, or the nearly undetectable blemish, and not your main engine problem, you would probably get really frustrated. Would you agree? Sure, the peripheral fixes add value to your car's overall well-being. Nobody is doubting that. But without a direct engine fix, you will soon be back to the mechanic again. This is how we think about foot drop as well. Getting right to the source of the problem is perhaps the best way to find a solution. Wouldn't you agree? So, why don't we go straight to the source of your foot drag issue or unstable ankle? Perhaps, if we had a check engine light ourselves, then maybe the need for a direct foot drop solution would be more obvious. Let's take a step back and think for a moment on past automobile history. To a time when cars did not have airbags and car crash fatalities were much higher. To improve driver and passenger safety, car engineers did not simply tell people to slow down. Nor did the engineers pad the car's bumpers really well in case they got into a crash. You know, soften up the impact a little bit. The engineers also did not tell drivers to only travel on streets that were not busy, uncluttered, and well lit. Sure, that is all potentially very helpful information. However, it does not go straight to the issue for the driver when a crash does occur in real time. The automobile industry addressed this problem more directly by adding airbags and improved safety belts. Being direct with your foot drop is also a great idea. You see, millions of people everywhere only know how to address their foot drag or other balance problems via peripheral means, meaning many people go well above the knee to tie up the use of the hand just to treat the foot and ankle. Your foot drag. Let's pause for a moment, if you don't mind, please. We want to make it clear that this is not a knock against people who use canes or walkers, not by any means. We are just simply saying it is time to think a little differently in order to help fix the world's foot drop and falling problems. This, in turn, will help prevent more injuries or even death from a falling incident for millions and millions of people everywhere. Paying the price for walking problems is never enjoyable. This much is obvious, yet many people will continue to pay a toll that is unbearable if we don't better adapt to this crisis. Comparing interest to a fall. 
Speaking of paying the price, we would like to make a quick comparison to the world of finance. For example, would you instantly cringe if you were offered a credit card with a 20% interest rate? Stick with us here, you'll see the larger point momentarily. It all ties in to our larger story. Many people would turn the cheek if they were offered a card with a 20% interest rate. In other words, they know it would equal pain down the road with such a high interest rate. It would make sense to avoid that scenario whenever possible, wouldn't you agree? Well, our current falling percentage for older adults is significantly higher than 20%, as you already know from earlier in this book. It can be far more costly, too. The burden of this cost would not only extend itself to the faller, but also to their families and friends. The price of falls can be compounded in a way that a credit card could never do. Likewise, if someone offered you a credit card with at least a 25% interest rate, you would flat out reject it. I mean, come on, right? The 20% interest rate was bad enough, wasn't it? The 25% interest rate is hitting way too close to home. Forget that. Wouldn't you agree that this would be totally out of the question? You see, 25% would be something nobody obviously ever wanted to sign up for. However, when it comes to our current falling percentage, 25% of older adults or more are indirectly signing up for it whether they like it or not. We believe this is partly because of a lack of new, simplified information. It is also due to the fact that we have partial yet universally repeated coping mechanisms. As a side note, please remember that individuals younger than 65 can have walking issues as well, unfortunately. This walking crisis is not necessarily age-dependent. This walking crisis could care less what age someone is. In other words, we hear you if you're saying, I'm not 65 and I struggle to walk. Trust me, I hear you. You see, AFOs can help younger individuals as well. We will go into AFO specifics more in the following sections, but first we have to understand some very simple ideas on angles. This is the root of the book in many ways. Stay with us. It will be worth your time. Understanding the basics of foot drop. Good angles and bad angles. Okay, so how do we think a little differently about your walking problem? We know that we have to think a little bit differently somehow or people are going to get the same results they always do. We do not have to be drastic in our thinking, however. Let's just think about one or two things a little bit differently. You see, this concept can be very simple if we allow it to be. If we can change one or two minor things, this can shift the course of your life for the better. A positive trajectory change of only 15%, for example, over days, months, or even years can do a lot for you. Perhaps you might label the improvement as much greater than 15% when you try an AFO, like many of our patients do. Either way, we are definitely not going to ask you to reinvent the wheel. Now that would be a lot to ask. As we stated earlier, if it makes it easier to understand, think of an AFO like a cane or walker and that it helps people to walk better. Except the thing is that you do not have to hold on to our walking aid and it goes straight to the source of your foot drag and many other balance issues. In a sense, like our comparison to fixing your car, it goes under the hood and fixes your walking angles like nothing else we have seen before. For those of you that are reading this book, or I should say listening to it in the audible version, in the book there's a picture of a gentleman. He is Professor Jones. Professor Jones is making a point to his class. and In the class, he's holding a piece of paper with a right angle on it. And he says, let's take this right angle off the paper and put it down at your foot and ankle. This is important information to think about because it will affect those of you listening to this. But in the, in the written book, you can see the picture. But for those of you listening, you can't see it. What if we did what Professor Jones says to do in his class in the image we just spoke about? If we take the right angle off of any piece of paper and incorporate that into your gait pattern, things will start to change for you. Meaning your walking pattern can improve moving forward if your foot drags. You will also find that you can walk better if you suffer from having knee weakness with this very same idea. More on knee-related weakness coming up. Here is a general picture of what we mean when we make the foot and ankle form a right angle while you walk. If we give this 90-degree angle idea a chance in our minds, then we can think about how we can achieve that goal in the real world. 
The obvious problem though is if you have a foot drop, it's not exactly easy to hold that angle independently. Wouldn't you agree? You see, holding your ankle and foot at 90 degrees independently, as just spoken about, might seem like it is too much to ask when you have a foot drop. So then how do we go about achieving this 90 degree goal without making this super complicated? We do not accomplish the 90 degree angle with a high steppage gait, a half moon step, nor do we do it with a cane or walker. If you do those moves, you are basically taking the mechanics of your ankle out of the equation in a sense. You can achieve this 90 degree angle with the alternative that we are mentioning, an AFO. The walking device we are talking about will assist you via an external means at your foot and ankle. It will hug your foot and ankle and calf in a streamlined way, so the walking aid will be extremely hard to detect by others, unless you start showing people and bragging about it like some of our patients do. And yes, this does happen. If we corrected this one angle for you, we would then go straight to the foot drag problem itself. That is the power of an AFO, an ankle foot orthosis. And now it all sounds more simple, doesn't it? Yes, we could have just started this book with a talk about right angles and gait. You could have just called the book The Right Angle Solution. But if we did, you might put the book down thinking we were going to off the deep end into some physics talk. Most readers are not necessarily physics majors, however. And you may have disregarded the book and what it can provide for you. There is much more to our walking aid concept than a 90 degree angle, but I think you get the point we are making. A solution with right angles might not be meaningful to you initially, unless we discussed our previously mentioned ideas first. The good part about our solution is that you also do not have to focus on the right angle. We are sure you might have other things going on in your life that you prefer to do anyways. You see, this favorable walking angle we are talking about is already done for you. This is achieved with each step you take automatically when you see a medical expert known as an orthotist. They make the walking aid, and you benefit from using it. You do not have to think about the foot drop like you used to. In addition, what if we told you that you did not have to get rid of your cane or walker? Some readers might want to. Others will not. But how would that sound for you? To many of our readers, that could sound like a win-win situation. You would not need to subtract your walking cane just to use an AFO. The cane and an AFO, for example, can work together if you want them to. There can be a synergy there in many instances. We have seen an AFO take some individuals off of a cane under the permission of their physician, while others like the security that it can still provide. More about why a 90 degree angle matters to your gait. It is a simple concept to grasp when a 90 degree angle is on a piece of paper. However, chances are that no one has been educating you as to when it pertains to your foot drop until now. This information can literally change falls as we know them today for millions of people. One simple angle can help you to do that. Yet, it is likely that this is an entirely new concept for many of our readers due to the reasons we have mentioned earlier in this book, meaning the AFO is hidden by your clothes when it is worn. In other words, there is a public awareness issue. And moreover, the medical text has been its own impediment when informing people about the topic until now, meaning it can be too technical for many non-medical people, which is very understandable. Coming up with a simple explanation from a different point of view. We will include pictures and other images to help bring these concepts more to life for you. More clarity can be good. You see, when your lower leg and foot forms this right angle, your foot drop symptoms can cease being a problem. These words just mentioned are worth more than their weight in gold. Surely they are worth more than the price of this short book. Industry experience. As the author of this book, I can tell you that many professionals are asking the 90 degree question. The insider's tip that I would like to give you here, though, is that over the course of my career, one certain phrase seems to always come up in my medical profession. Can he or she, the patient, get to 90? Or can the patient get to neutral? If a person can get to 90, then the walking aid is working at its best in our experience. This is a very common scenario. 
other people can definitely benefit from an AFO that is not set at 90 degrees as well. So don't count yourself out if this idea seems to be too difficult right now. Some people just cannot get there due to a temporary contracture or other physical limitation that can be addressed by a therapist and some stretching. However, the main idea here is this 90 degree concept. It is often the initial goal, not only for the patient, but for the orthotist that is seeing them for this walking aid. Wouldn't it be great if this concept could help you in your gait? It's important to note that the walking aid we are talking about does not cure your foot drop. This also needs to be said. Instead, however, an AFO can effectively help you manage the negative symptoms you have when you're standing or walking. Let's take a second look at our picture together. So in the written book, for everyone listening to this, in the written book, there is a picture of someone in their, what's called their swing phase. They're swinging their foot through in their swing phase and their foot and ankles at 90 degrees. And it just shows how you're not dragging your foot when you do that. So I say, let's take a second look at our picture together. Do you see how the foot can swing through more easily when the 90 degree angle is implemented through the lower leg, ankle, and foot? Yes, it is an image we created, but the truth remains, meaning your foot is up and is not dragging on the ground as you bring it through with each step. If you wish, please check out our video course that we talk about in the conclusion section. It takes these concepts a step further and can teach you other important ideas about walking. We approach gait from the perspective of many different medical professionals. Learning more about it will be worth your time. Also, please take the time to check out our Facebook support group called AFO's Foot Drop and Fall Prevention. There are people there that can give you independent reviews and thoughts on what has worked for them. It might not be as comprehensive as the video course we were talking about, but it is a good free resource. Angles that are greater than 90. We also want to illustrate the issue with one other angle. It was chosen at random. In our picture shown in the book, we have a 100 degree angle. In our experience though, it can be anything greater than 90 degrees, really. This 100 degree angle is just an example of when the toe can start to drag during the swing phase of gait. You might have a 110 degree or 115 degree angle to your own foot and ankle in consecutive steps in reality. When you bring your foot through with each step in the swing phase, the angle of the foot could vary each time, actually. This will happen because the scenario is uncontrolled. But the idea here is basically anything greater than 90 degrees is what helps your foot drag to hang around, literally speaking. No cane is going to pick up your toe for you, unfortunately. No two-handed walker is going to do that for you either. The cane and the walker are just there to help you hopefully prevent falls when they start to happen. Our feeling about it is that these handheld devices can help you, but they do not address your walking mechanics like an AFO does. Perhaps you want more proof, independent of what we are saying to you right now. And that is okay. We cannot blame you. You can go to the internet and independently search for terms like heel strike and mid stance, and you will undoubtedly see pictures similar to ours with a 90 degree angle that illustrates the point. Please look here at our picture on the following page as an example of what you might see for yourself online. So in the picture that we've created, we can't take somebody else's picture and say it's our own. So what we did was created a picture and it shows just certain key moments in your gait or standing where your foot and ankle form 90 degrees. It's just really that simple. So we're trying to illustrate that to you here, but also if you want to take somebody else's word for it, just look up the terms, mid stance, heel strike, those things, and you'll see it for yourself online. It'll be the, the leg coming down as one part of the right angle and the foot is pointing at a right angle to the leg. So I hope that helps this come more to life for you with what we're talking about. A normal walking cycle resembles a heel to toe gait pattern for a person without foot drop or a weak knee. In the medical industry, when you hear the term heel to toe, that is a favorable sign during gait. A heel to toe gait pattern means your heel leads at heel strike as you put your foot down in front of you. Then your toe will hit the ground after. If you had the opposite, a toe to heel gait pattern, that is not optimal. This, to us, is just another way of saying you have a foot drag or drop foot. 
In essence, this would mean your toe would hit the ground first, and you would then drag your foot through until you can land the heel on the ground. Eventually, this could lead to a trip, fall, and potential ambulance ride scenario for millions of people. If your foot drags, in our experience, 9.9 .9 times out of 10, that angle becomes greater than 90 degrees. It's that simple. Sometimes, a person's hips might dip down and cause the issue, but usually that is not the case in our experience. Our company name, Ranella Prosthetics and Orthotics, is used in the illustration here. The truth, though, is that some of our colleagues in the industry might be a better fit for you due to distance issues from your current residence. To find a professional in our field who can help you with an AFO, we recommend searching online for prosthetics, orthotics, and your zip code, unless you can somehow meet with us yourself. Other companies may offer to come to your nursing home, assisted living facility, or other residence, like our company does. Some companies do not offer this kind of service, however. You will have to do some phone calling to get to the bottom of those kinds of visits in your area. Remember, we are trying to help you understand the overall concepts. If that is all we ever do for you, that would be a step in the right direction. We want to help you regain your freedom of movement and prevent future falls any way we can because this issue is so rampant in our society today. Knee weakness and how it relates to falls. You might not always think about your knee and how it relates to falls. You might pause and think about it for a moment and then move on because that is what so many people do that come to our clinic. The truth is, this problem flies under the radar for so many people and it definitely contributes to falls in our experience. It might be the least self-recognizable problem in your gait that contributes to falls in our experience. In fact, you do not need foot drop to fall at all, nor do you need another ankle problem or balance issue to fall either. If your knee goes out on you, then you could go down like a ton of bricks. Unfortunate, but true. Does your knee ever give out? In other words, buckle, like in the picture you see here. Notice when the knee buckles, that could be the start of a fall for someone. Can you see it? It becomes problematic. If you buckle your knee forward like that and you cannot recover instantaneously, can you see how that is a problem? It is kind of like something hitting the back of your knee behind your leg and your knee pops forward. If you cannot stop the motion from occurring as your knee buckles forward, then you can fall. Usually, this would mean that you are falling forward in our experience. Does that make sense? Back to our picture. Can you see how the ankle and foot angle is less than 90 degrees when the knee buckles forward. You see, the two are linked. If your knee buckles from time to time, then hopefully this scenario has not developed to its fullest extent. Or, if you do start to fall, hopefully someone will catch you. Maybe you can hang on to something like a wall or furniture to balance yourself. Or maybe your cane or walker will kick in and you can avert that particular falling instance. For many people, this scenario can be the start of a forward fall, as mentioned earlier. The big takeaway here is if your knee is weak and gives out on you going forward, do you see how the ankle angle is less than 90 degrees when this happens? Notice how we keep bringing up this 90 degree angle in different ways. It can relate to the foot and ankle, and it can also relate to the knee. Both of these issues can contribute to falls if things go too far in a negative direction. Moving forward. Interestingly enough, if you have a knee problem, it does not necessarily have to mean that you have a knee buckle, meaning it does not necessarily result in your knee buckling forward like our previous picture. For some individuals, the knee issue is actually just the opposite, or it could be both. Meaning, instead of buckling forward, some people's knees actually snap back with each step. Unfortunate, but true. This does not do your knee ligaments any favors as time goes on either. Do your thigh muscles ever feel weak 
and you feel like you are forced to snap the knee back, in other words, hyperextend, you might do it without any conscious thought. Notice how when the knee snaps back like this, the angle at the ankle is greater than 90 degrees. Again, the ankle and knee issues can be linked. You might not think you have a knee issue at all. Many people do not see this as an issue for themselves instinctively. What are your thoughts? Do you have this issue sometimes? If you are someone in this position, we understand where you might be coming from. However, please have a good look at what we are telling you. This is because many individuals who think they have a foot drop actually still can have knee problems as well. It happens all of the time. And sometimes it takes a person from the outside to see your gait and let you know what is happening. What do you think about all of this so far? You might feel like you are drinking from a fire hose now in this section. You can now see perhaps why we did not start with this information. But to break it down in an easy way for you, let's look at all of this in summary form. Just know that if your foot drags along, a 90 degree angle can help hold it up as you take each step forward. Sound fair? Also, if your knee is weak, it can give out on you either forward or backward. If that happens, the same 90 degree angle at the ankle can help stabilize your knee indirectly as well. Two birds with one stone, if you will. To determine if you have a knee issue that needs to be addressed by yourself or with a team, we like to recommend the team approach. We believe it is best decided in a discussion between yourself and an orthotist, doctor, and maybe a physical therapist, or at least with one of these individuals and yourself. You see, oftentimes, people might be so aware of the fact that they have a prevalent foot drop issue that the knee problem can sometimes be overlooked in the short term. Believe it or not, the knee issue oversight happens a lot unless people visit a gait expert like an orthotist, doctor, or physical therapist, as we have mentioned. People will sometimes do the knee snapback move because they know if their knee buckles, they can fall forward. The knee buckle may have happened to a person so many times that they try to prevent the issue from happening. So as a result, a person can compensate and snap the knee back to prevent the buckling from occurring. Or others cannot control the snapback and do it unconsciously, perhaps from weeks and weeks of repetition or due to significant quadricep weakness. Does that make sense? After having your gait and muscles tested by a licensed specialist, you might think differently about your knee and how it relates to your walking challenges. So often the issues are linked as we are mentioning here. Perhaps not in every case, but much more than you might realize right now. Most people are not gait experts, and that is understandable. So that is why the secondary problem can be overlooked. Sometimes knee problems or foot drop might present in a different way. Sometimes people have knee weakness only after a long walk or at the end of the day when they are more tired. It can vary how the issues present themselves. As you already know, though, it is important to preserve the ligaments in your knee. It does not take an expert to tell you this. You already know those are important. Just imagine for a second what a routine snapback can do to your ligaments over time. It will not be good. Repetitive acts can do a lot, even at a subtle pace. Just ask any rock that's in a stream. We bring this up to you now so that you can become more aware of the situation if it is happening to you. If you do go to a specialist, it is wise to have them check the muscles that support and control your knee function. This problem is significant in our society today, and along with foot drop and sideways balance issues, this is a major contributor to falls. The good news, though, is that it can be addressed before it becomes a much bigger issue. How to help prevent sideways falls. What if we told you our walking aid also included an element that helped you to avoid falling sideways as well, meaning it would help to center your weight line. In other words, 
your balance. As you have read earlier in this book, many people have a side-to-side balance issue or have an angle that rolls. Our walking solution can help you study your balance from side to side, as well as help address the knee, foot, and ankle issues we have already addressed. You may currently believe that it is your main issue, or you might be thinking this is part of your overall walking problem. Either way, if you do not have a sideways balance issue now, you could develop this issue, unfortunately. We are trying to prepare you for the what-ifs that happen in life for people with walking problems. You see, we all get older, and this can mean we need more support as we move down the road of life. People who stand with a weight line that is centered often have a knee, like in the picture at the left. Meaning, for an otherwise healthy person, you can stand up and point a line down through the center of their knee, down toward the floor. This is what we consider to be a well-balanced weight line. As we have talked about earlier, many falls happen when people do not even take a step. But rather, individuals can oftentimes fall to the side. When someone does fall to the side like this, it can mean that their weight line is no longer centered between the center of their feet. Please do not try this next idea at home if your balance is an issue. However, we need to bring it up so you can understand how this walking solution can help you. If you leaned your knee to the outside of your foot, as seen on the right above, you would find that you would start to fall over to the side, unless you could somehow recover, right? If a line was drawn downward through the center of your knee, at this point, you would find that it would land on the outside of your foot. Please see the previous picture again for a reference. If you cannot recover from a weight line that is shifted to the side of your foot, then you might find that you will soon be on the floor to the right or left of center. Does that sound logical to you? These are the big three scenarios that we see. Now you are becoming much more of an expert in gait and can use this newfound knowledge for your own good. Or, even after that, you can tell others to consider these principles as well. When we break these ideas down like this, you can now start to take more control of this crisis that is not only perhaps giving you trouble, but our society at large as well. A custom AFO can help you control your weight line and help to stop you from falling sideways. You see, an impression of you can be made so that it helps to keep your knee line like that of the person on the left in the previous image. Someone whose knee line points toward the inside of their foot. And by doing this, you would not be nearly as likely to fall off balance to the side. It is these subtle ideas that can make all of the difference. By a streamlined, lightweight external means, you would find that your weight line was always more centered. A cane is not the only answer for this issue. This is golden information if you struggle with sideways falls. After you hear or read it, it can all make sense, but you might not have thought of it yet before reading this book. In the medical field, some people call this controlling your postural sway. The upcoming picture is a reference for postural sway, a thing that has happened to you perhaps your whole life, but you might not have been aware of it until it became a problem. People can have postural sway a lot when they stand. When you were younger, you might not realize it because you are constantly adapting subconsciously. Seemingly small, micro-adjustments are always being performed when you were without this walking issue. However, when you become older, perhaps, or need more support, then controlling postural sway externally becomes important. Does that make sense? Canes are very helpful for postural sway for many individuals, but we believe our society needs more than a cane offering because our falling crisis is still out of control. If you cannot momentarily control your postural sway, there can be terrible consequences. Unfortunately, millions of people all over the world will not be able to adapt, and before reading this book, they might not have known why it was happening. In summary, we can help you control your knee, ankle, and foot position 
then you will have a great asset on your side. Do you see how that can work for you? It is like we're fortifying the root system that you have from below. Obviously, we are not trees when we speak of roots, but if we had a tree that fell over, one of the first things people might question is the strength of the roots beneath it. If you struggle with any of these issues, a foot drop, a weak knee, or a sideways balance issue, then this walking support can help you. We hope that you'll let it. From the treating clinician's point of view, there is obviously more than just one good walking angle at work to help someone walk better. But if we get a custom AFO, you do not have to worry about all of that. That is the beauty of an AFO. The specialist, known as an orthotist, would be helping you. It would be their impression of your lower leg, ankle, and foot that would capture all of the important details meaning their cast impression of your anatomy would be done in a way that would consider all of these important angles. Then they would use that impression of your anatomy to make your walking aid. The orthotist thinks about all of this important information before making the walking aid, so you do not have to think about it later when you start walking. Sound good? Hopefully these ideas are starting to click for you. You might be reading this, and this might sound a little different to you, but we think that different can be good for millions of people since our current coping methods are not providing enough of the solution that people need. Remember, the concepts of AFOs are taught in medical schools around the world. They are truly medical-grade walking aids. Obviously, the concepts in medical school are not this simplified, and these concepts illustrated here are our words. However, we see the power of making this quickly and easily understandable. Simple can be great, especially right now. Chapter 6. Ankle Foot Orthosis, AFO. Actionable Steps and Specifics. At this point in the book, you understand the consequences of walking problems and falls. You have learned why walking angles can be helpful or hurtful and so much more. Now it is time to talk about AFOs more specifically so you can understand them more. Remember, you want good walking angles during gait. These angles can make all of the difference. This walking aid can help provide that for you. Plus, you won't have to think about trying to mimic a 90 degree angle by yourself, especially since many people with foot drop cannot lift their foot to a 90 degree angle independently. Does that make sense so far? As mentioned earlier, it is less about the walking aid and what it looks like, in our opinion, more about what it does for you. This is true especially because an AFO can blend into your natural skin color or it can be covered by clothing. Or some people we know even cover them up with a sock so absolutely nobody can see them. You see, this particular walking aid a custom ankle foot orthosis, or any of its close relatives, will in many ways look like you when it is on your lower leg, ankle, and foot. Actually, the AFO will be the exact shape of you at the time of the impression was made of your lower leg, ankle, and foot, if you go the custom route. A cast impression is kind of like a 3D picture of you at the moment in time that the cast was taken. An impression can also be made from a 3D scan of you as well. However, you want the walking aid in the end and not the scan. Sometimes people are so impressed by the 3D scan of themselves that it takes on a life of its own. It is the device itself that truly matters in the end, and more importantly, the solution that it can help provide for you. The scan doesn't correct your drop foot or incorrect walking angles. It is kind of like a carpenter, for example who could get caught up in the features of a drill and how expensive it may or may not be, or perhaps how much it weighs, or what it looks like. But in the end, we want the hole that the drill can provide, not necessarily the machine itself. Does that sound logical to you? If you get a cast impression or a 3D scan, this means it can precisely fit the widths, lengths, and circumferences of your lower leg, foot, and ankle, in specific, this means that it can fit your calf size and shape exactly, your heel size and shape, and the height and width of your arch and the width of your forefoot, etc. 
We could keep naming aspects of your lower leg, ankle, and foot, but you get the point. If the impression of your lower limb is made by a licensed orthotist, it will basically be an exact replica of the shape of you with a few modifications for comfort. Like, for example, you want a little space at your ankle for comfort because your ankle area has bony prominences. Trust us on that one. Or you might want padding at some aspect of the walking aid because it will help soften up the bottom of your foot for shock absorption purposes, for example. Tip number one, go to a licensed orthotist in your area. As mentioned in the last chapter, you can find an orthotist by going online and searching for prosthetics, orthotics, and your zip code. Something that looks like this, prosthetics, orthotics, 60451. They have the ability to fabricate a custom AFO right to your shape or give you medical grade prefabricated options you might be interested in. An AFO usually has a thickness of 3 sixteenths of an inch for most adults. That is about as thick as two or three quarters stacked on top of each other. That is it. The thickness of a cane or walker dims in comparison. In other words, the thickness for one of these handheld walking aids is far greater in comparison. So if you can use a cane, then you can definitely get used to the appearance of an AFO because it won't be seen once it's on your leg most likely. As stated before, many people have walked right near you your whole life and you never knew that they had it on. On occasion, vanity can try to play a part when we consider a walking aid and some individuals might ask themselves the question, what will people think? It might not be politically correct to say this, but please realize that almost everyone else you meet will primarily be focused on their own life challenges. That is what is most likely first and foremost for them. They are not judging us as one might assume. Moreover, the AFO is hidden. If someone were to think only of you, for example, they are not as likely to be staring down at your foot and ankle to see what your walking aid is, most likely. They will see you from the waist up, and this walking aid will not be a point of conversation. As mentioned earlier in our book, an AFO is not something you have to hold to use either. If anything, it holds on to you with two padded straps. Your hands stay completely free because you wear an AFO directly on your leg and foot, and it fits into your shoe. This brings us to our next actionable step, getting the proper shoes. Many people want to know what shoes to wear with an AFO, and that is a good question. Tip number two, getting the proper shoes. It is up to you and your orthotist to discuss this topic. We say this because we do not know what kind of AFO you will be getting unless we treat you. There are many different styles within the custom or carbon fiber AFO genre, as you will soon see. Some are made for runners and hikers too that attach to the outside of people's shoes. In the end, the main takeaway from our point of view is that for most AFOs, the shoe has to allow for slightly more room than what is required for your foot. Tight sandals and dress shoes that are not made for your foot in the first place might become an issue. Or the shoe has to work well with the clips that are on the AFO that attach to a shoe as well. As stated, oftentimes dress shoes are not ideal because they do not afford much space other than what they allow for your foot. Some work, some do not. There is no telling until you try the AFO on with a shoe. Gym shoes or shoes with a little wiggle room work the best in our experience. But please do remember that many AFOs are made without tread and as a result they need to go inside of a shoe. You do not want to slip if you momentarily overlook this guideline. In fact, there are also shoes that have a zipper on the outside that open up extra wide for the allowance of AFOs. Your orthotist can help you find brand names to work with, but it is our experience that zippers are not a requirement, just a good option to consider. You can also search online for AFO shoes with zipper if you wish, or ask around in our free online Facebook group at AFOs Foot Drop and Fall Prevention just like the name of this book. Below are some common tips we give our patients if their current shoes are tight or if they are concerned about a shoe and an AFO. Again, clear all of this with your orthotist before incorporating these ideas we talk about. A. Removing the insole. Many health professionals and patients will remove the 1 8 inch insole 
that comes with shoes when using an AFO. This can make a big difference in how the AFO and shoe fit together. This is true because many AFOs are 3 16ths of an inch thick, and by removing the 1 8 inch insole, which is equal to 2 16ths of an inch, you will have more room in the shoe. What is left over is 1 16th of an inch, and although this does have thickness, the difference becomes much less significant. B. Stretching shoes. You can try this on your own after doing some research or your orthotist can help you. Oftentimes, though, this means that the orthotist will need to borrow your shoe for a little while so the stretchers they have can do its job. This might be an hour, a day, or a few days depending on how much stretching you need done. C. Consider getting new shoes. Simply consider getting new shoes if that is possible. We realize that it is easy for us to tell you just to get out your wallet and go shopping. If it helps, many of the larger conglomerate stores have gym shoes that will work for $10 or less. Just a thought to consider. On occasion, some shoe stores have been known to sell people one shoe that is a half size bigger on one side if needed. This can sometimes help an AFO to fit well. Shoe stores do not all do this, but some will be more flexible in this regard. We have never done a study on this, but approximately 10% of the people that we have given an AFO to will do better with a new pair of shoes. But usually what happens is that people can use the shoes they have already with our walking aid solution. They may need to take the pre-existing insole out of the shoe, like we talked about before, or stretch the shoe in a spot potentially. But in the end, most of the time, people do not need to buy a new shoe in our experience. Another important point that can help you is that if you bring the AFO with you to the shoe store, the process of shopping for a new shoe will be more efficient. Why? That way you're not guessing at what size you will need. You see, if you can figure the sizing out in real time, then you will immediately know what feels good for you. In this way, you can be more confident in the shoe purchase. What other people will notice about you with an AFO? People will predominantly notice how much better and more confident you are walking. Or, if they just met you, they might not think anything at all about your foot drop issue in the first place. This is how good these walking aids can work. Now I'm sure that there is an outlier example that can be presented when an AFO was not enough support. But that is usually for people with absolutely no knee control or a hip issue that needs support in addition to foot drop. These individuals might do better with an AFO's relative, otherwise known as a KAFO. This is also known in the medical field as a knee, ankle, foot orthosis. KFOs are far less common, however, when compared to an AFO in our experience. You see, an orthotist will try to stay below the knee for a patient whenever possible. In our opinion, KFOs go above the knee center by about 10 to 12 inches or more. Coming up are some pictures of AFOs, shown from the side. You might be used to seeing the front of your leg and the top of your foot as you look down, but these are images from the side as you will see. We put in some options that have some flair, but yours can be far more simple in color if you wish. You can visit our website and see a whole host of different colors that can be made available to you as well at mygateexpert.com. These colors are generally available to you whether you come to our facility or went elsewhere to one of our colleagues in the field. They can be decorated any way you want, really. Some online websites even make custom stickers for you. Obviously, this is a personal choice, but you can put these on your walking aid if you are so inclined. AFOs can be single colored to help match your skin tone. Some have hinges, some do not, depending on the walking problem and your specific needs. Also, some people we know even put socks over the top of them to absolutely make sure they are concealed, as we discussed earlier. Remember, the images above are, in a sense, replicas of people's anatomy that we have treated. The point is to show you colors and some general designs that are common today. You will be able to rest assured that yours can look like your leg, and then it will be only the thickness of two to three quarters as you look down from above. Next are some images of what a carbon graphite AFO can look like. These are often prefabricated walking aids in our experience. In our experience, the plastic AFOs mentioned earlier and the carbon graphite 
AFOs that we are about to mention are by far the most commonly used AFOs out there. Others do exist, for example, as you will soon see if you join online support groups. In these groups, they can share brand name information with you that we cannot. The upside of carbon AFOs is that they are typically lighter in weight. Plastic is not heavy, but carbon graphite is even lighter. It is almost unreal how light they can be. However, the downside is that they often cannot support someone from side to side. In other words, your balance, as well as a custom AFO does, in our estimation. As mentioned before, an AFO is ideally provided to you by a specialist with a license, if you want to do it right. A professional known as an orthotist. These individuals become certified, go through medical school programs, complete residency programs, pass state boards, earn and pay for licenses, and complete continuing education just to be able to serve you. There is something to be said for that. Moreover, if you go with a specialist and you have medical coverage, the AFO solution we are talking about can be free in many instances based on your deductible situation and your coverage criteria. It is a case-by-case -case scenario, however, to see if an AFO is covered, but oftentimes they are. Now that is a deal. The orthotics office can help you get to the bottom of your coverage and benefits information too. This service is performed for free. Take that help. They research insurance benefits all of the time. And if you have not done it before, trust us. You would rather have the orthotist's office do it for you. You can be on hold sometimes with insurance for easily 45 minutes to get the answers you want. The hold times can kill the batteries in your phone. Moreover, when dealing with insurance companies and trying to find out your coverage, if you do not know, quote, the lingo, you might be at a disadvantage. Knowing the insurance lingo and process helps. If you do not have the experience, you may have to do more research and then call back and start over. All the more reason to let the orthotics practice help you. They can give you a quote of benefits, but they cannot guarantee the payment of the walking aid as they are only telling you what the insurance company told them. One tip we do want to share with you, though, is that if you are proactive in the process and help the orthotics practice get the required notes you need for coverage purposes, things go much more smoothly. A new AFO that we have not spoken of yet. Coming up is a plastic and leather AFO with laces. It is fitting that we started with a testimonial about this very AFO, and now we're ending talking about it as well. This walking aid can help you with pain and help improve your balance. There are different versions of this walking aid available to people based on their needs. The laces are good for people who fluctuate in size due to edema, otherwise known as swelling. Laces are also good if you want to make it more snug based on your needs. The leather is used to help make the brace softer to wear. While most AFOs are for foot drop and indirect knee issues, this one can be used to help others deal with a foot that is struggling to maintain its structure or for balance issues as well. How great would it be if you had balance or pain issues and this support helped you with those problems? If you have not read it, there is a powerful testimonial of a woman in the beginning of the forward section that talks about this particular style of AFO. She is able to regain her lifestyle and even scale a large hill on a weekend adventure. You see, some individuals use an AFO primarily for pain reasons and balance problems instead of foot drop. You can use an AFO to help reduce arthritic pain that is inflamed by the movement in different parts of your feet. As a result, there can be value there for you. Decreased pain is good. Some of these walking aids are used for those who want to avoid an ankle fusion. Sometimes, instead of going in, Get an ankle fusion, a patient will try to use an AFO of this kind to help reduce a range of motion that will cause pain. As you can see in the picture, there are different kinds of closure mechanisms. For example, you can see there are eyelets for laces. Other people like a combination of both eyelets and hockey style closures. Conclusion We would like to thank you for reading this book. We hope that you learned something along the way that empowers you. You see, that was one of our goals from the very beginning. We would like to think that we are hopefully 
leaving you in a better place after having read through this information. After you've had a chance to process this information in your own time, hopefully you will agree. We think this information is strong enough that it can have a very positive impact on the world's walking and falling problems. We can tell you that we have seen these walking aids give someone the achievement of walking confidence, but it is the transformation in someone's spirit that is priceless. I am not trying to imply that life is perfect after you get an AFO, but the positive results of these walking aids never cease to amaze me. You see, our walking aid solution does not only help people to effortlessly transform their gait, but it can be much more than that. We hope that in time, you will look back and agree with us on this statement as well. Try an AFO for yourself. See if it helps to give you the favorable heel first, toe second, gait pattern that we talked about earlier in this book. Just a quick side note. Please work with a specialist when you get one of these because some of the knockoff versions online might give you the wrong impression of this walking aid. You know how that can go with other things that you may have purchased online in the past. Sometimes you can get what you've paid for when you go the least costly route. I can even remember one gentleman I met bought one at a garage sale, and then did not have an optimal experience thereafter. You get the point. Just remember, the simple concepts presented here can help you get some of your life back. A walking problem left untreated will gladly try to steal life's moments away from you. That is what we are trying to help you to avoid. The external support from one of these walking aids has the potential to change our world's walking and falling crisis, and we hope you let this information help you. We do realize that this is a big statement to make, so let's look at this another way. If all this walking aid did was help you walk around your home more safely, would reading this short book have been worth your time? If all this walking aid did was make it so you do not fear the next fall, would have reading this short book have been worth your time? If all this walking aid did was only do half of what we talked about in this book, would it be worth learning more about? If you said yes, then it is time to learn more. Or you can have a discussion with your doctor about using one, and they can write you a script to get the process started. We would love to see you and all of our future readers in our office, but due to distance, this might not be the best option for you. Do please remember, though, that some of the best AFOs are custom-made and custom-fit to people. Therefore, not all of the -the off-the-shelf versions of this walking aid will be the best for you, meaning it is best to get help in person with the medical experts we mentioned earlier in this book known as an orthotist. They compete to get into medical school, pass credentialed residency programs, and fight to continually keep their license with continuing education requirements just to be able to serve you. By all means, go online and visit our support group and see what other people are saying about AFOs. Just as a quick reminder, our free Facebook support group name is AFOs Foot Drop and Fall Prevention. Remember, it is just like the name of the book that you are reading now. You can learn more from the other independent contributors in these groups. Moreover, there are other groups online that you can join as well if you want to participate in more than one forum. The choice is obviously yours to see which one you would like to participate in. Just to be transparent with you, we have not talked about every single type of AFO in this book. We wanted to, but due to the emotional ties that some manufacturers have about using brand name information, we opted not to do so currently. You will, however, be able to quickly find out about all AFO types if you join one or more of these support groups online and do a little bit of research. Perhaps, most importantly though, we have discussed many different types of AFOs with you thus far. We have shown you many different styles as well. Many key concepts about gait transformation and fall prevention have been presented here from our point of view. We realize this information presented in these pages might be a new concept for many of our readers. New can be good, however, especially right now. 
Things such as the 90 degree angle, a shifting weight line, and a weakened knee might all be new concepts for you, for example. If you feel a little overwhelmed by some of these topics, then we cannot blame you. You can, however, let this information sink in a little bit and perhaps later on reread the topics that need reinforcing. To put this all very simply, if you have a walking problem, please realize that a cane is a start, but it might not take you where you ultimately want to go. Meaning, if canes were enough, then we would not have a massive falling problem in our society today. Wouldn't you agree? Having said that, please keep studying gait for your own good. A foot that drags, a sideways fall, or a knee that gives out from time to time can be all addressed with the mechanics of an AFO. Although this is a simplified presentation of the material, just know that if you take a 90 degree angle off of any piece of paper and incorporate that into your gait, then you can oftentimes walk better, especially if you have foot drop or a weakened knee. The side to side aspect of balance can be addressed very quickly as well in the impression taking process of an AFO, and you can be the one that benefits from their use. This custom impression of you that the medical professional takes will help to hold your weight line between your base of support. In other words, keep the weight line between your feet. Obviously, please do not try fabricating something like this at your home. This is something that should be done for you by a licensed orthotist. The truth as we see it. Until now, chances are no one has ever come up to you and taken the time to explain these concepts. As the reader, we encourage you to become more educated and proactively bring this information up in your next doctor's visit. As you already know, many doctor visits are 30 minutes or less in length. At least that is the case in our experience. Obviously, some are longer, but many visits do not extend beyond the 30 minute mark. Having said that, it is hard for the doctor to give you the entire medical dictionary in that time frame. That is why specialties, such as ours and others, exist in the medical field, and for good reason. Please do remember, though, that this is not a new concept amongst medical professionals. The difference lies, in our opinion, in the lack of simplified information that has been presented to the public. No one has been trying to hide it from you, per se, but for better or worse, these concepts are not mainstream yet. Explaining this walking aid cannot be done with a few paragraphs, and that is why we chose to do this via stories and to incorporate this into a book's form. Once you take these ideas to your doctor or therapist, for example, one of two things will happen. First, you will find that this is not a new concept as we have stated previously. This will help to reassure you that this is not an infomercial product that was born into existence yesterday. Two, the second thing that you will find, and we actually want to warn you about, is that many medical professionals know and appreciate the value of an AFO. However, it is our experience that a few medical folks like to put their medical specialty first over that of nearly all other medical forms of treatment. I'm not trying to sound negative here, but you can probably imagine the scenario. Watch out for this trap. Beware of the person who downplays everyone else and only wants to promote their line of medical thinking. It unfortunately does happen. Obviously, listen to what they have to say, and then you can compare it to what you have already heard. The support groups online that exist can be of great assistance in the fact that they are neutral. This way, you can come to your own conclusions after communicating with independent contributors on the topic. After having read this information or listened to this as an audiobook, you hopefully will walk away feeling good about the possibilities in front of you. However, when it comes to something new, there is an element of the unknown. This can become an impediment for people moving forward sometimes, and understandably so. If you want to learn more about gait transformation and fall prevention, we recommend you learn about our video course. To learn more, visit www.mygateexpert.com. Many different medical professionals will come forward and give you their thoughts on walking transformation and the tools and strategies that work. You will see that we like the group approach. Ultimately, we want to see you succeed. 
whether it is from the material in this book or from a different angle. Taking your education to the next level is never a bad idea. We have never seen a course on walking transformation and fall prevention so well done if we do say so ourselves, and we think it can help you as well. If you want to learn more, then you can visit the website listed above for more information. Please do not do what our character John did from the book. Some problems, especially those that have to do with walking, do not always go away on their own. We hope we can reach you before any future falls occur first. As you have already heard us say before, you deserve better than that. If you have any thoughts on possible ways to help improve this book for future readers, we are all ears. Please email us with questions, concerns, and suggestions at support at mygateexpert.com. We would be happy to hear from you. Best of luck to you, Daniel Ranella.